streets so quiet, the squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. Stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. Stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. Stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. Stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. Stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. Stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. Stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts.
can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday the streets have never been so quiet the squirrels found a new hideaway tomorrow will never be the same there is so much hope in our hearts can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday the streets have never been so quiet the squirrels found a new hideaway tomorrow will never be the same there is so much hope in our hearts They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts.
can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday the streets have never been so quiet the squirrels found a new hideaway tomorrow will never be the same there is so much hope in our hearts can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday the streets have never been so quiet the squirrels found a new hideaway tomorrow will never be the same there is so much hope in our hearts They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts.
They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday the streets have never been so quiet the squirrels found a new hideaway tomorrow will never be the same there is so much hope in our hearts can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday the streets have never been so quiet the squirrels found a new hideaway tomorrow will never be the same there is so much hope in our hearts They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. They can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. Ten.
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. A very warm global namaste to all our viewers from wherever in the world you're connecting to us from. Wherever it's the morning, good morning. Where it's afternoon, good afternoon. And good evening for those who are enjoying the evening. Welcome to Healing Our Earth's first vegan vegetarian session for 2023. Today on the 29th of January, again, 2023. Now, as you know, before we begin each session, we always like to bring in a little bit of positivity. So I'm going to start with a small mantra, the Gayatri Mantra. You may wish to use any affirmation, any prayer, any positive wish within your heart so that our world heals fully and completely from the pandemic so that peace and harmony and happiness may prevail on our planet and may we look for a brighter, better, bigger, greener, more sustainable tomorrow. So let's all sit comfortably and easily and let us all close our eyes. Let's center ourselves with a long, deep breath in. Slowly breathe out. One more centering breath in. And just drop everything and let go. I will be saying the Gayatri Mantra three times. You may wish to say any prayer, any affirmation that you hold within your heart. Om Bhur Bhuvasvaha Tat Savitur Vareniyam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Deyo Yuna Prachodayat Om Bhuvasvaha Tat Savitur Vareniya Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Deyo Yona Prachodayat Om Bhur Bhuvasvaha Tat Savitur Vareniya Bargo Deva Shadi Mahi Diyoyona Prachodaya. Keeping our eyes closed, let's hold one small prayer, wish, affirmation for happiness and peace on this earth. I will say one loka samasta. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Very slowly and very gradually Taking your own time, as in when you feel whole, centered and complete, you may very gently take a deep, long breath in and slowly breathe out. And very, very gently, you may open your eyes. And welcome back for those of you who have just hopped on. Welcome to our 173rd episode at Healing Our Earth, 2023's first vegan and vegetarian kitchen. And boy, oh boy, do we have a surprise in store for all of you. We have a wonderful topic. We have a beautiful budding chef on board. We have excellent speakers. So do stay on with us. And before before we go any further, I'd like to introduce you to our host for this afternoon, Kiran Robinson, a very dynamic, 
vivacious lady who has many accolades, Kiran was born in India with a career span of over 30 years in the hospitality industry and that to over three continents. She started her journey in my own Hong Kong. She's the chef and entrepreneur and founder of the niche brand Taza Foods. She's a, future, she's a food futuristic stylist, very good at concept designing and a wedding planner. These have all been parts of her commissions and she was successfully receiving IFB government tenders as well. This dynamic lady was offered the role of hospitality, food services and operations, managing the executive dining room in a very famous hospital, in fact, one of the top hospitals in the San Francisco Bay Area in California, where they were serving 10,000 employees. Yes, that's quite a number, 10,000 employees daily for 17 years. Karen was instrumental in the planning and opening of the new state-of-the-art hospital in the Palo Alto area of California, this wonderful lady gives back and she's the co-founder of the Malawi Children's Mission, which was launched in 2007 till present. They serve vulnerable children, provide nutrition, education, health care and life skills. How beautiful is that? Karen is a very empowering lady. She's focused on community building. She works with chefs and women entrepreneurs. And her mission is to impart her excellence in hospitality through the mediums of speaking, reading, writing, and coaching. She's currently based in Luxembourg, where she wrote her first book, Seva, The Art of Hospitality, a must read, I must say so, which was launched in November 2021. Now, if you wish to learn more about this wonderful dynamic lady who has so many accolades, I could go on and on about her. Just log on to www.kirinrobinson.com. A very, very warm global namaste to you, Kiran. It's so nice to see you. I must wish you, because you're from Hong Kong, a very happy Chinese New Year. Konge Fat Choi, may the year of the rabbit bring hopping joy and happiness to all of us. Kungifa Choi Sima, it's so lovely to see you. It has been a while. Thank you for that lovely intro and welcome. A global namaste to you. Very, very warm welcome to you. Thank you for having me here with you today. Oh, it's I've been looking forward to this session. Yeah, same here. because it's been a while. You know, we've been traveling, we've been away. Yes, and we hadn't had our uh, vegan vegetarian kitchen, and it's such a joy to be back. Absolutely. I'm trusting that you had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's, all the holidays. Indeed, I did. I was away in India. It was wonderful. Yes. Seema, you know, we, you know, when we start, we just can't stop. Um, but just for the benefit of our viewers, not that you need any intro, but may I just go ahead and do that in case we have some new buddies who um, don't know you. So let me just do a little formal introduction here. Seema Bhatia. Seema was born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya. Her culinary interests developed at an early age, founded on a family food business. Extensive travels in Africa, India, and Southeast Asia have allowed her to follow her culinary passions and grow her knowledge on the effects of food on the mind and body. Using secret skills handed down from her lovely grandmother to granddaughter with the belief that you are what you eat. And she draws from that ancient practices of Ayurveda and Mayan. <clears throat> I'm sorry, wisdom, uh, the Mayan wisdom curating health health healing spice blends, immunity enhancing yoga teas, self-care prescriptions, and other well-being foods. One's thought process and um, method breathing can positively or negatively impact one's mental and physical health. Seema is a qualified breath, water, and sound teacher with the art of living. 
her intertwine of diet, breathwork, meditation, and self-care prescriptions nourish the mind, body, and soul, and put one on a journey of greater well-being, allowing one to live their life to the fullest. Seema has successfully shared the skills and knowledge with corporates and individuals over many years in Hong Kong and Singapore, and is now based in Oxford. Well, I was based in Oxford, we were based in Oxford and right. now I'm based in the lovely buzzing, buzzing, buzz, buzzing city of London, which of is London, absolutely, which gives me so much joy to live in. Absolutely. And we're enjoying London and and uh, and the cold. I, I but I think uh, it has absolutely worked for you. You know, from what I see, you love it and it loves you. And Sima, you are totally passionate about music and dance, and you enjoy producing and hosting ki kitchen episodes. And hence, you are here. And what a delight it is to have you here and host together with you today. It's so lovely to have you on board with us, Kieran, and as I as producer of the kitchen episode you also fundamentally contribute in such a big way to all these episodes bringing your expertise and your knowledge on board it's it's uh, so empowering to have a woman with a wealth of information like yourself to be here with us and thank lead you. us in this show it's 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 fabulous thank you Thank you. I think uh, we're all of the same mindset. That's why we're so attracted to each other, aren't we? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. And moving on, Kiran, we have a, you, a very, very interesting uh, concept ahead of us today, don't we? We do indeed. And we were definitely going to share our knowledge with all of our viewers. Um, but before we do that, we do have a lovely... Um, cooking vegan vegetarian episode here today, don't we? And I don't know if um, Alicia is here. Have you seen We're her still around? waiting for her and and she has a great surprise in store for us for today. And yeah, you know, his, uh, Alicia has actually moved from the UK to uh, India now. Right, and exactly. I, I had the great opportunity of meeting up with her and a wonderful family in New Delhi. Yes, and that's right. You were there. Yes, so tell us a little it. bit about your your time in Delhi. You know, just just for our viewers to get acquainted with what you were doing. So my time in Delhi was a gift from the universe, and a gift or a gift from God. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was uh, in Delhi with my family, with my mom's brother and his. My, my, my aunt, who's, who's a gem of a person who spoils me, rotten, yeah. and they run, they run a fantastic ecotourism resort, which is between Gurgaon, which is in Haryana, which, is very, which borders Delhi, and Faridabad. So it's in the Munger village. And they run an NGO there by the name of Laksh Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to say this because it's very close to my heart. Lakshmi was the name of my my nani, my grandmother, and my aunt named it after my grandmother. So that's very touching for all of us. Mm -hmm. And they grow all organic produce. They're very sustainable. So they have uh, they have their own dairy where they only serve A2 milk, where they only have A2 milk from A from the cows. They make their own ghee. They make their own butter. Uh, the cows are fed on, you know, purely a vegetarian, vegan diet. Uh, they're brushed, they're looked after, they're babied, you know, they're healthy. And it's so ethical. The practices are so ethical in the context that the baby cow is always fed the mother's milk before the cow is milked. So they don't take that away from the baby, mm. you know. And my, 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 aunt is, my aunt is very holistic, so they grow mustard you know they grow radishes in season produce um we call it kali gajar in uh, hindi we say the dark red carrots mm -hmm. they grow beetroots they grow spinach they had an abundance of arugula or rocket on the farm and i was enjoying this fresh fresh produce straight out from the farmland so literally if i wanted to have a radish i'd just tell the farmer can you pull out a radish for me and it was 
crisp and it was bursting with that freshness, with that burst of water that you get in your mouth when you bite into a radish. Mm. Fresh, organic. And she goes to the farmer's markets on, um, on Sundays mm-hmm. where they serve village cuisine made from this produce. Mm-hmm. So they serve uh, fantastic uh, millet bread, bajra roti, mm-hmm. uh, sarsoka sag, which is a traditional Punjabi North Indian favorite, which is mustard greens, cooked with a little bit of radish or turnip and given a tempering of ghee and spices. Um, Kadi, we call it kadi, or kadi in Kenya or curry in, kari in Punjabi with the fritters, the pakoras, which are synonymous to Sindhi cuisine very much so in Hong Kong. From all my Hong Kong Sindhi friends out there who are watching, I miss all your pakoras, you know. And they put the going pakora. back to, but Sima, going back to, to the farm, you were just like down to the basics, weren't you? It was literally going back. To basics. So it was literally like from ground to mouth, you know. Ground, farm to table. Yeah. Literally. So what was that experience like for you? Did, did it give you? Even, I was there for five and, weeks. Sorry to cut you short. Weeks. This is so yeah. because I I had gone for some some work as well, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I have to say that I was sleeping in nature. Yeah with the sounds of the owls at night and the birds in the morning. Right. I was breathing the most precious, uncontaminated air because we were away from all the Delhi pollution and eating the freshest produce. I think my energy levels went up, you know? Yeah, sure. Uh, There was a lot more prana, a lot more life force energy. The whole place is buzzing with life force energy. Mm Literally, I have to confess, enjoying that farm to table produce, literally yeah. straight out of the kit or the or the shamba, as we call it in Swahili, or the farm, you know, the little uh, farming patch onto our table was the best. It took me back to my grandmother and her yeah. farm, how we used to eat when we used to visit her farm in India. It literally took me back. To yeah basics inspiration did you get ideas of what you know mm, lots of ideas lots of recipes lots of ideas lots of uh, ancient methods of cooking mm. now, the, now they have uh, they 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 have what we call a chakki over mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. and they mill their own flour right right and they grow ragi there which is Did you get a chance to use the chakki? No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh. But I saw the ladies do it. And so, so yeah. they mill their own spices. They mill. So they literally do what my grandmother used to do, you know? Right. So you must yeah. have collected a lot of pictures and stories. I have some pictures, but this, and very, of course, stories, stories of yes. my grandmother, stories from my uncle, my maternal uncle, sharing with us, you know, us, you know how, how, how his mother lived on the farm, so how my mom actually lived, yeah. you know, which is something we may have forgotten along the way. She might have shared it with us when we were younger, but stories of how my mother lived and how my grandmother used to go sugar cane, wheat, um, all the vegetables, lentils, you know. Yeah. Uh, Oh, I'm getting goosebumps just listening to you. Yeah, it's amazing. And um, Five weeks, was it a, a healing experience for you? It was the best thing I did for myself in my entire yeah. life. Yeah. And it opens was, up your mind, doesn't it? It opens up your mind. And the beauty of it is you're so in tune with nature. Yes, exactly. When you're there, mm-hmm. you're so in tune with nature. So you're not only nourishing yourself physically with the produce, mm-hmm. you're nourishing your mind, your body, and your spirit as well. Yes. I had a lot of quiet time. Yeah. And silence which gives you a lot of time to sit back, meditate, reflect, mm-hmm. you know, and think about things and think about. And, and, and that timing, that was a time of reflection, wasn't it? Here, the year, the year is closing and you're embarking on a new Absolutely. year. Absolutely. So Very time. powerful time of the day to implement those resolutions as well, mm-hmm. you know, for the new yeah. year. Yeah. And what really caught my eye there, besides, you know, the lovely food that we enjoyed mm-hmm. is is the organic produce so my aunt composts everything 
Right. Every vegetable is composted. Mm -hmm. She has this composting bin in the house and they have it in the outside kitchen as well. The outside kitchen is the catering kitchen for the events and everything. Mm -hmm. The inside kitchen is the sacred home kitchen. So everything gets collected, tea leaves, carrot peel, onion skins, you name it. And it's composted with cow dung mm -hmm. because they have cows. Mm -hmm. And that goes into the beds, the farming beds. They also do vermiculture. You know, with the with can you the educate us a little bit on that? So I don't know much about it, but all I know is that when they had the compost, they put the worms in and they aerate the soil. This is what my aunt told me to you know make the soil more. Uh, uh, I'd say more <laughs> the word I use is nutritious or more uh, better for the vegetables okay. to provide a better uh, feeding ground for the vegetables. Yeah, and I believe it's a, a certain type of bacteria as well going in to enhance the soil, you know. My aunt mentioned something around, along those yeah. lines. Yeah, my son in knows that. I've been asking her to come on board and speak with us actually about her lovely. farm. She's so busy, she's so busy, but she's very holistic. And, you know, the beauty of the farm is uh, you get a lot of time to live very holistically. You know, you're enjoying all this wonderful farm-to-table produce. It's organic, it's unadulterated. There's no chemical mm -hmm. used whatsoever. You know, they're totally a no-no. It's an ecotourism resort. And you can literally sit back and you can even have someone come in and give you a massage. Oh. You, know, you can have a <laughs> lovely, you know, detoxifying yeah, massage. Or if you want, you could... Really, now, you know, I'm big on Ayurveda and Ayurvedic cosmetology and beauty. So, you know, we would, my my little cousin and I would sit and we would make our own scrubs, you oh. know. So we had leftover coffee grounds because we both love to drink uh, percolated coffee. And we would, you know, get the sugar and get the cold pressed coconut oil because you won't get anything but cold pressed oil in my aunt's uh, farm. You won't get anything but organic ghee. Everything is a no no. You know, literally, no plastic bags allowed. Oh yeah. my goodness, you, you're in trouble if you bring plastic. So much so that my aunt has stopped carrying her fancy handbags. She's so simple. You know, she'd be wearing the best of sari. And you know, she'll grumble oh, yeah, even if there's a yeah. little bit of leather in the shoes. She's like, oh no. Can you yeah. think of the you know the animal that <laughs> gave their life for the shoe and everything? But, but it's all about sustainability, isn't it? You know, all about sustainability. You know I, I mean, that's the change that I'm going through. You know, I don't even want to buy bags anymore, you know, and really just carry a tote and go out and put what I what I need, you know, on my ventures and, and call it a day, you know, by sustainability here, I actually mean the sense of buying less, you know, less is more. And yeah, yeah. Less yeah. is That's more in many space ways. With more and more and more, you know, yeah. You know, less is more in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I say that, when I, when I see my mommy, Ila mommy, her name's Ila Lumba. And for those of you who are really inspired with this conversation, the farm's name is, is Laksh Farms. It's in the Munger village. They are, run an NGO where they educate all the children over there, like your Malawi's children mission, Karen. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's a great ecotourism resort. You know, they have these mud huts. Mm -hmm. So they're made with the clay, the, the handmade mud huts. And as you enter the huts, they're done a five star. So they have an air conditioner, they have a heater, they have hot water, they have all the Rajasthani beautiful uh soft furnishings gorgeous furniture and you can go and stay literally in the midst on the on the foot of the aravli mountains mm, how beautiful you know the aravlis and you, you can just enjoy the freshest air they have a fig tree which doesn't get pollinated because it's a goan fig tree and my mama my mom my uncle my mama was telling me he says I said, so don't you get figs here he said no I said why he says because there's one particular fly it has to come and pollinate this tree. And that flies from Goa. And this yes. is a Goa fig tree. But it was so beautiful. It's in the center of the farm. They go yes. mangoes. Hey, yeah, you're, you're painting such a beautiful picture here. Do you happen to have a website so our viewers can? I, Lux Farms. I, I think it's www.luxfarms.org or luxfarms.com. I'll, 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 I'll come back with that. Yeah. I can go along. Please do. Please do. And 
and the ladies do folk dancing when they have the events you know the uh, the the ladies of the mongol mongol village when they have lunch events people book the place they come for lunch they enjoy a day out schools bring the children to learn organic farming they have rabbits there they have hens there they can feed the rabbits they can feed the cows it's so cute yeah and uh, then the women will do this folk dance they show you how to make those bajra rotis by hand you know, they literally do it. it. Was it's chefs come there and take pictures? They're so inspired with everything there. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, and everything goes back to nature. That's what's beautiful. Are they, and, are they feeding masses? Sorry, are they feeding masses, or is it more controlled? And they feed the children in the school. They provide a nutrient dense diet for the children. They yeah. provide education. You know, they provide different life skills and everything for the children. Um. The, I would say pretty much a lot of the village is looked after by my aunt and uncle because they are providing employment. Sure. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. Great employment. And they really look after everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're feeding their whole staff on a daily basis. Yeah. And with nutrient-dense organic produce straight from farm to table. How much how how does it get better than that, Karen? No, it doesn't. I mean, I mean, you're providing employment here. You know, you're giving out opportunities, and then there's the education part, and then the tourism, and it just goes round and round. You know, so and they have, you know, they have the schools that yeah. come in. Yeah. the children come yeah. in. They play with the bunny rabbits. They feed the cows. They plant a vegetable. They plant a little, you know, a little tree, or they do something that makes them really feel good that they've contributed to the climate you know yeah. to the atmosphere to you know sustainability Absolutely. in so many ways Just giving of themselves in in a huge way that that's that's amazing and so rewarding you know very yeah. very very it was a great experience i could go on and on and on about it yeah, really but those really five weeks were were like a, a real gift for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know get away from the city life and just be on a farm and for those of you who haven't experienced going out in the wilderness or just living on the farm and just connecting with nature, it is such a great reboot for your mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really is. Yeah. 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 And we all need that, that self-care, that mental awareness, you know, that healing. Yeah. It, you have to be connected with nature, absolutely. Absolutely. And my, my aunt, I call her, I, my mommy, she's, she's just such a lovely lady. I call her an, an earth mama. Mm. She's an earth mama completely. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. What a You're welcome. Story. Thank you all for <laughs> listening to my nice long story about my trip to India. We love I'll bring students. the website up in a bit. I'll, I'll, I'll have it put up, pulled up on a yeah, bit. Yeah, it would be nice to share with those. I'm sure they're all fascinated now after hearing your story. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful place. And the weather was good for you? The weather was Delhi winter. So we had sunny, crisp mornings. The wind, the night times get a bit chilly. Sure. You know, and so we'd all cuddle, my cousin and I would just cuddle, cuddle up together and we'd be chatting together. You know, she's very sweet. The, so we'd be chatting and um, she's actually a script writer yeah. for okay. television serials like, and movies in India. Mm -hmm. We'd startle up and we'd just tell stories and we'd enjoy lovely cups of tea or a cup of coffee and we'd just mm -hmm. chat and, yeah. you know, it's very cozy time. Oh, very that's lovely. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. So um, what do we have next going on, Seema? Oh, we, we have a wonderful topic of discussion coming up, you know, today, and you're going to be educating us on several facets, Kiran, and I wanted to say I've been reading your food passion series on uh, your, uh, on your, on subscribe, articles. Yeah. your articles and yeah. how food, food and fashion is correlated and how, you know, pe the chefs are moving more towards uh, food being fashionable and trends that are actually synergizing with uh, the new wave of thought, I should say, and the essential wave of thought on how we can have more sustainable food, you know, how we can contribute uh, to the current climate crisis that is going on in our world, which is a huge 
topic of discussion, you know, we... Yeah, we'll dive into that in a, a little later after we bring Alicia in, you know, and... Uh, yes, indeed. A little more deeply about that. Yeah. I'd like to share what Alicia is doing as we as 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 she's going to be joining us soon. Yeah. Alicia has moved back to Delhi and she's uh, been you know delving into all these mind body soul retreats and you know as you know she's a great vegan vegetarian cook. Yeah. And um, she's 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 a mini version of my Earth Mama Auntie. That's what I say. <laughs> Yeah, and and she graduated last year, um, almost towards the end of last year, didn't she? What Indeed. a great achievement! We're so proud of her. Yeah. I am so proud of her, and she's uh, she's got so much to offer our world with her wealth of knowledge at such a young age. Yeah, and. Um, you know what, since you touched on that, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce us so our viewers know who exactly we're talking about. How does that Perfect. Happen? That would be wonderful. Yeah, so they have an idea. So Alicia is a 24-year-old psychology master's graduate who is passionate about mental and physical well-being. Born and brought up in Delhi, uh, Delhi, India, and moved to the UK where Alicia lived for eight years, developing her passion for cooking. Having moved back to India recently, she has dived into her roots, learning about the health benefits of using naturopathic and Ayurvedic teachings to keep herself healthy uh, through clean and conscious eating, incorporating plants, healing herbs, fasting, and intuitive eating has helped her improve the quality of her life tremendously. She shares her experience through her social media page at plantbite underscore and through her new project, Wind Song Wellness Retreat. Isn't that beautiful? Wind Song Wellness Retreat. You have to check her out. A space where she has carefully curated wellness programs targeted towards holistic living and sustainable long-term wellness. After healing her autoimmune eczema through her gut cleansing, eating, and lifestyle habits, she encourages others also to live a life of mindfulness and believes that life of quality is something everyone deserves to have. I certainly do. <laughs> Whoops. You mentioned her wind song retreat, so she did share some pictures with me. She will be oh. joining us soon at 3 p.m. today. Yeah. So um, she she shared some pictures of her wind song retreat with uh, me. First thing I told her, I said, I said, name is wonderful. You know, when it's Gorgeous. in it's in the mountains in India, you know, in Manali, and they do yoga and meditation and holistic cooking. Um, it's. I wish I could have done it on this trip, but I was strapped for time. So yeah. I had things yeah. going on, but it. Karen, we should go together. Yeah, I know. I was just going to say we should trek there together. You know, go to your aunt's and go to Alicia's place and just uh, make a lovely holiday of it. You know, and film everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and really. Um, I had a few videos of the farm, which I'm going to pull up and maybe sure. we could share them a little later. Yeah. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, gathering them all together. Yeah. Uh, and what I wanted to say is that it, what amazed me in India is the amount of awareness that's popping up. Mm -hmm. the, and I think I have to say this in more fairness worldwide towards organic sustainable produce mm -hmm. you know oh, yeah, for sure yeah and and in every indian supermarket you go into a state of the art spencers whatever and then they'll have a section of let's say lentils and leg legumes for example one will be non-organic it's huge you know they have organic ghee organic e2 ghee organic milk, organic lentils, organic spices, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and 
a lot of them are uh, are uh, very ethical in the context that they even tell you where they're from. You know, they're from the small village where the mm-hmm. ladies are actually pounding the spices, and of course, they might be a little more expensive. You know, because it's a smaller business and it's more sacred, mm-hmm. but you know where it's coming from. Mm. I, I'm I'm really touched and really proud um, to see how far they've come. You know, um, it's like they have really delved into the whole. Yes, this is available to us. Yes, by um, by nature and by who we are. You know, having been Indi- being Indians, we have been exposed to this all our lives. I'm talking about spices and the organic ghees and milks and things like that. Um, so yes, we do have a step into it already, so to speak. However, um, that doesn't mean uh, it's easy, We, but we want to join forces. We are going to jump into this and we want to be able to help, like you say, um, promoting it and packaging it and yes. labeling it and saying, here we are, you know, this is what we have to offer now. Now you can take and everything is already made um, easy for you. So there's no, oh, we can't do this or we can't make this because we don't, A, we don't know what it is and B, um, where to get it from. Now it's ready available, you know. And like I said, all prepackaged and labeled for everyone's consumption and easy to understand, you know. Yes. And of yeah. course, and of course, more and more people are more aware and reading labels a lot more these days, you know, where is it from, what does it have in it, what additives, what preservatives, etc. People are moving towards a more real way of life. People are, I mean, there is still room for many of us to change. Absolutely. And it's not, I mean, the focus and 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 the the whole thing doesn't fall on the farmers, you know, then you have people who can do the marketing and the distributing, the technology comes and there are lots and lots of uh, players involved in, in this um, arena, wouldn't you say? It doesn't Absolutely. have to be the onus on the farmers, right? Absolutely. There are a lot of players involved in this arena. You know, this, as we're discussing this, I can't help, I know I'm diversifying a little bit, but I can't help but come back to your article on Substack on food fashion and how beautifully a friend of yours who's in the clothing business tied up silks with spices, with the warmth of spices, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and all the yeah. colors and everything. As that was Zenia. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yes, tell us more about so the reason your article and the reason why you wrote about yeah the reason I wrote the article was I thought it was time uh, you know just for maybe different demographics you know just to bring them on board and share the knowledge that we know now and um, and I thought it would be fun rather than delivering uh, point blank a uh, point blank points uh, for lack of a better word about the whole climate change and all of that. I thought it would be it would be fun since I'm a lifestyle contributor to share it as food fashion, you know, under the title food fashion. It was such a success, even from um, food technology companies, that um, I decided, um, yes, you know, um, I will do another one. So I did. Um, uh, phase one, phase two, phase three it turned out to be three articles, and then just the comparisons of um, how fashion takes us everywhere. You know, we're naturally intrigued by fashion and change, and to see where it's going. So why not marry the food concept into that and bring in climate change? You know, <laughs> style it up a bit, and it was hugely popular. I had so much fun doing it. And the comments that I got um, from a lot of my readers, it was truly encouraging, you know. And that's why on today's platform, I thought we could bring some of that back today 
uh, as we, um, after Alicia, as we talk about climate change and what food does to us, and then we'll broach on sustainability. And, and I know we're, we're going to have a gallery of panelists of our friends on healing our earth and just invite them and have their contributions to this um, subject and see what everybody is doing. I, I'm excited, and I know you are too, Zima. We have certainly talked about this and touched on it, is that the fact that um, though as educators and food masters, it is our duty, our job to educate the world. But what I'm excited and happy about is to see how many people are involved already and the the fact that they want to be involved and want to learn and pass this knowledge on and not just pass it on but to be totally invested in it and say yes you know hands up i'm i'm game i want to be involved in this and i'm going to do my best you know as we speak you know we, we we're gonna have uh, of course a whole uh, uh, a role of panelists who are going to come on board and ask questions and give yeah, their contributions. So and we also encourage our viewers worldwide, you know, come on board, share your expertise, share your knowledge, share your views. If you have some questions, we try to answer to the best of our abilities. You know, it is a topic that needs to be addressed. We don't have time. That's the reality. And there is an urgency in this situation. You know, it's being addressed worldwide. It's a new, I'd call it a new hot topic, you know. And well, a good hot topic. It's a it's very good hot topic. topic, you know. Very good hot topic. And, you know, what I see is the children mm -hmm. are very aware. And I also see them faced with a little bit of anxiety as well, that what is our tomorrow going to be? Yeah, but it's funny, it's funny you mentioned children. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So I was talking to my grandsons yesterday and my six-year-old grandson says, well, Nani, basically um, we have, uh, I am, we have in our school and I am uh, the, um, what do you call it? I'm the hero. I'm like, what, what hero are you? Sorry, what was that? Eco, I'm the eco here. Thanks, honey. That was my husband. Thanks, Sean. Oh, bless him. He's prompting me. Bless He's him. the eco hero. And I'm like, hmm? <laughs> the who hero? Eco hero. I'm like, Kellen, what does an eco hero do? Well, we just pick up all the trash and we put it in the trash can. And uh, uh, there are separate trash cans for different things. So I'm wearing the cape. I'm the hero. And I'm an eco hero. I was like, oh, my gosh, this just happened yesterday. I said, That's go for it. so amazing. How old is he? Six. He just turned six. Wow. So you can see that even the kids uh, can that. be involved, want to be involved if you give them a concept tied in with a little excitement and, and, and adventure, you know, um, and, and they're, the they're in. The schools are bringing that element of playfulness into it, you know, to educate Absolutely. the children. Absolutely. So it becomes, it becomes a game through which they learn. You know, if you look around you uh, in the, in the bookstores, for example, there is little cards for children now, you yes. know, on on being what you say, an eco warrior, really. Right, 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 right. You know, on on God's on how to save the planet, on how to grow a tree, on how to you know yeah. plant you know. more trees. <laughs> and their books with these little stories, and you know, we didn't have that. The time when we were growing up, the world was moving to more convenience based stuff. Sure. You know, we've actually done it to ourselves. We introduced plastic. And yeah. now we want to move away from a plastic, we want a more plastic free world because it's affecting so, you know, it's affecting the sea animals, it's affecting so many ecosystems worldwide. So there's so well, you know, it, it's it's all about policies, right? So I, I have made a note about plastic and, uh, you know, facts and numbers. We won't go into that now. But the, the fact that, you know, plastic was readily available for us, it was cheap. And it was like, here's a bag, you know, you go shopping, here's a bag and here's another bag. And, and then we'd come home and, and then we'd have heaps of bags. But now you can see people are like, no, uh, then it became charging for each bag, you know, to eliminate the whole plastic concept. And now it's just like, uh, no, no plastic at all. Bring your own bag. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it takes a while to transition, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it 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 also uh, comes with awareness. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And you know, we're doing our utmost, and we will carry on doing this um, as long as people are uh, made aware and conscious of the fact of what we're doing and want to listen in. I think uh, we can make it work. <laughs> of course, we can. Yeah. Of course, we can. There's, I mean, you know, there's so much to talk about. And I see our wonderful Alicia has Hello. come on board. She's come straight from Delhi. Hi, Hello. Alicia. Warm welcome. Global Namaste. Delhi. How are you? Global Namaste, Namaste, Alicia. Global Namaste. Thank you for having me. So good to see you again and be back on Healing Our Earth after such a while. Such a pleasure to be here. You are amazing. Thank you. Happy New Year. Kumi. Happy New Year. I haven't seen you for a long time. Yes, Happy New Year. Are you and well? Family is well? Yes, all well. Thank you. Um, how, how are all of you doing? Nice Great. to see you again, Alicia. After a couple of weeks, we met recently in Delhi and yes, enjoyed the crisp yes, sunshine. I was speaking to them about the farm and the produce and the and and you know you've been to the farm once or twice yes. before, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. I, actually, I went for the first time when I when I saw you there. I oh, hadn't so, been before. So it was your mom's second visit. That means because okay. your mom's been yeah. there before. Okay. Probably, Tell us what. Yes. Share your experience with Kiran and I because we were speaking about the farm earlier. Mm-hmm. Just for yeah. our to get a feel of how you felt <laughs> over there. Yeah. Alicia, I, I took the liberty of sharing your bio but uh, before oh. you came on, but I was wondering um, if you don't mind uh, sharing your your new project, the Windsong Wellness Retreat. I love the name, so if you just share a little bit about that, we would be so grateful. Thank you for the plug. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, yes, of course, uh, I'm working on a new project, and uh, I... Uh, we have a family home in the hills in Kasoli, and my grandfather had actually named it Winsong. And so uh, I wanted to create a concept where we ran wellness programs over there because I feel that, so, uh, you know, we have so much to offer. The space has so much to offer. And especially now, I think people are really struggling with work-life balance, stress, um, conscious living, and just wellness and well-being overall that we wanted to create um, dedicated programs to different, um, to leading towards different outcomes, uh, health outcomes and things like that, um, and, and, and put them together and deliver them. So that's um, what we did. And yeah, I'm so and excited. Where did, where, where did the inspiration for that beautiful name come from? Um, the inspiration for Winsong was actually a name given by my grandfather. Uh, he had named the property when we had first built it about 12 or 13 years ago. And, um, you, you know, and, and he's an author and, you know, we, we had just asked for his input and he came up with the lovely name Winsong. And just to play off on the words, you know, I went for Winsong Wellness Retreat. Um, mm. Sorry, there's a light flickering. <laughs> um, He's trying to say something to you. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll turn that off maybe if that's distracting. Sorry. Sorry no, no worries. <laughs> okay. There I'm you go. Back. There you go. Um, right. Uh, sorry, I could see that through the camera as yeah. well and it was distracting to me. So sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I... Uh, we're basically delivering wellness programs um, and everything we talk about over here, you know, on our, uh, on this lovely platform that Neilji has given us, uh, we, we share pretty much all of that and put it into action over there mm-hmm. and deliver our programs. So it's been wonderful. Bravo. Um, Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> thank awesome. you. Yes. And just, just about started. It's a new project. So I'm oh, really I wish you excited. all the best, you know, much, Thank much you. success here. I mean, this is something that you're doing for the people, you know, uh, yeah. bringing wellness and, and healing for many, many people. This is awesome. It's yeah. essentially a, a healing place, you know, a yeah. playground where they can come and um, be made whole and new again. 
Yes, and I think uh, being so close to nature and being amongst it, you have no other choice but to, you know, almost be a part of it in a way mm-hmm. and allow that to guide you and mm-hmm. feel grounded. And, you know, I think that's what uh, we wanted because the place I feel has so much to offer. I think any place which has, you know, an abundance of trees and wildlife around and nature and, um, you know, your local uh, you know, we've teamed up with, for example, local farms that do organic mm-hmm. produce. And I heard you talking about sustainability as well a little bit earlier before I came on. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and so we're trying to be as sustainable as possible. I really wanted to develop something that would be mindful of all of these things. So we're giving back to the farmers and the community living there by buying their produce and supporting them. And we are getting better health outcomes as a result of it. And, uh, uh, not not just in terms of health. I mean, even the taste of the food is that much better, and um, I mean, it's just it's just been uh, lovely, really, to be to be able to do yoga outside and sit in the sun and soak in, you know, every moment. And and also, I think do specialized programs where we have the facilitators coming in. I yes. I wanted to team up with people who have that wisdom to share, you know. Uh, and so they are entirely running the programs. I'm doing the food and nutrition side of it. Um, but, Alicia, know, if I may, I'm going to connect you with a very good friend of mine from Stanford. She, I did her article two articles ago, or one article, one article ago, and it was a huge success. By the way, if I may say so myself, I'm going to connect with uh, connect you with her right away. And she's opened just one of these wellness centers out, you know, out in the, in, in the Santa Cruz property in, in California, uh, new and better. And just what you said now about connecting programs, it's exactly what she's diving into. I think you guys will, um, you know, learn a lot from each other. You seem to have the same, same type of thinking. So after this, I'll definitely send you an email, connect you guys. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, great. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's what it's about as well, connecting with people through healing and through wellness and creating a community, I guess, of you know, all of us. So that, uh, that's what that's we're doing. And what do you see, what role do you see yourself uh, contributing to here? To the retreat or to, yes, to the, the retreat? To, to the, retreat. Uh, the role that I contribute is uh, I I make sure everything runs smoothly, I guess. All the programs run smoothly, the organization. And food, you know, is a big thing for me. Um, you know, I, I want to be able to provide and put on healthy meals and options. Uh, for example, you know, it's not entirely vegan. It's vegetarian. Uh, but we've teamed up. I mean, the, the dairy that we get is from local farms and the local cows. You know, we've gone and seen how they're taken care of and, you know, the medicinal values, you know, of that dairy as opposed to manufactured dairy and so on and so forth. So the role that I play, I guess, is bringing all of that uh, and, and educating our guests and, you know, having these informational talks and, and making sure that everything runs smoothly. Do you like the general that. manager, you know? <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I wanted to hand over the uh, programs to people who, uh, you know, wanted the space to be able to run these types of programs. Mm-hmm. And so I I pretty much left it all to them. And I, I do food, nutrition and all the organization. That's kind of what I do. <laughs> so, but, you know. Alicia, you've had a couple of very successful retreats <clears throat> already. I'm aware of that because they were oh. running while I was in India when we met. Yes, yes. Yeah? yes. And uh, yes. uh, it's amazing how many people are so ready to embrace a lifestyle change. Yeah, absolutely. I think people are actually looking for something like this, but didn't know they needed it in a way. You know, yes, um, you shared pictures. Karen, she shared pictures, and I was telling you the retreats in Manali, sorry, the retreats in Kasoli. That's right. I remember now. And she shared pictures. Uh, with me after retreat center and the trees and the sunshine and I think you're in a yoga pose or something Alicia oh beautiful oh, there. I want beautiful. to see those too <laughs> I think you shared some pictures of the food as well and uh, yes. some information on the workshops that were being conducted you yes. know yes. and the place is so beautiful you know it's it's very pretty I have to admit you know okay. 
Please come whenever yeah, you want. I'd love to. I would have, you kept telling me to come this time, I know. But it just, yeah. uh, I was so caught up with it. I know. No, no, it's, uh, I, it's open for, you know, the healing oral family, of course, anytime. So. Bless you. So sweet. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, you, you were saying you run them for a program uh, one week or two weeks. Your retreat? Um, there are different uh, time frames. It depends on the program. So there's a three day program, a five day program, and there's a 10 day program. Actually. So if we got a group of people together, we could register and come to your retreats, right? Yes, 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 absolutely. Fantastic. We look forward well, we're to excited. Them. We're looking forward to this, you know. Thank you so much. Phenomenal. For the kind words. Phenomenal. Thank you. So Alicia, not to change the subject, but welcome on board again and tell me what you're doing today for us. <laughs> today, um, I am demoing a recipe. Uh, it's a vegan recipe. Uh, and it's a, so I, our theme is a one pot winter warmer. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I think uh, with cooking and with creating meals at home from scratch and trying to be mindful, I think people really struggle with time and they struggle with um, convenience and comfort and those types of things. So I think sharing recipes like this is really essential. You know, you have all your uh, sort of big nutrient groups, your macros, your micros all in one dish. Um, and you can literally just put this one dish, this one meal on the table uh, and make it in a sort of larger quantity than I am today. And it can pretty much feed the whole family, you know. So that was the idea with this. And it's winter and it's cold these days. And uh, I think everybody just needs a nice warm hug with the food that, that they eat. So I, that's what I had. What I had envisioned was this, um, you know. As, as a winter warmer. Uh, I, I love the concept, but um, sorry, but is would you say it's economical as well to do one of these one pot winter wonders, you know? Absolutely. If anything, it is more economical, I feel, because it feeds the entire family and you're using things that are uh, very low on cost as well. Um, it requires a little bit of prep, like mm -hmm. any meal. But uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, there's nothing more economical than uh, vegetables and, um, and, and, and dried lentils or pulses or, or things like that. You know, you can buy them dried, they store for a long time and uh, you, can, you can soak them, boil them like the chickpeas that we have here uh, whenever you need to use them. And you can even, uh, you, you can even do the prep in advance a little bit with the chickpeas and you know leave them for, when, for whenever you need them you know mm -hmm. uh, we, we sometimes store batches uh, of chickpeas cooked chickpeas um, in, in the fridge and we make things like hummus throughout the week or we make uh, chana at home or we, we do so many different things and it's a sure. good source but of, you know, even just from the wastage and sustainability point it's one it's a one pot wander you're saving on power heat yes washing, uh, water, you know, so many different yes. things, right? Yeah. Right. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, that's a great point, actually. I didn't think of that. But yes. Um, your I think Seema wanted to contribute. Seema, did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I think, uh, the, of course, you know, you spoke about saving on power, heat, everything, because you're making one dish in one go. But it also seems very wholesome and nutrient-dense. You've got the fiber from the chickpeas. You've got, you know, the nutrients from the uh, vegetables and you're adding a carb to this as well, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm adding uh, black rice, which is highly nutritious. Um, I can maybe try and bring it up close. I don't know if you can maybe yes, see please. that. That's it's, what I found really interesting about this dish is you're incorporating black rice. Now, Karen, you know, in yeah. Asia, we have a lot of red and black rice, as you know. In yeah. Thailand, we can actually savor a mango, a, a mango sticky rice pudding, and they serve the black rice on the side, you know, or the purple rice, as we call it. So yeah. Yeah, give us a thought of the black rice and tell us more about your inspiration, why you chose black rice, you know. What yes. led you to do something so unique but so good for you? 
Sure. Uh, so black rice, really, I mean, uh, living in India or living anywhere I feel, I try and seek out what is grown locally and what's available. Um, not only is it better, you know, in terms of sustainability, but it's also better in terms of uh, how good it is for you because it's that much fresher. It's come from a, lo a local source. Um, you're like you're more likely to trace where it's come from, um, and so uh, the the production and and it's so nutrient dense. It's got higher antioxidant levels than white rice. It's got less starch. It's got a low glycemic index. It's got more fiber than white rice, um, and and so for all those reasons, I chose black rice. Uh, but you, um, I think these um, grains and pulses and, and veggies, really, you can swap anything out for whatever's locally available to you. I, I chose to go with black rice today because it's a nutrient powerhouse and it's grown locally in, in South India, but it's grown in the region of India as well. Uh, and, um, and you so know, my, my, my styling mind immediately goes to plating that dark rice on the base and then you pile it with, you know, layer it essentially with the different colors of different ingredients. What, what a spectacular uh, photograph that would make of the styling of the platter. I can't wait to see the end results on this one. <laughs> you know, we talk about eating our rainbow, Kiran. We always talk about eating our rainbow through our foods. Now you can think of, you know, you can have your carb staple, which has a low GI as a uh, Alicia said, and I would assume that black rice is very, has a very high iron content. Am I right? Um, it would have, it would definitely have more iron than, uh, than I, I don't, other than other carbs, yes. Other carbs. But, okay, so you have this black rice and then you have the vibrant yellow behind it and you have the greens and you can add in the indigo and the, you know, Whatever. Violet, violet, indigo, but, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, you know. Any we'll wait for that. Rainbow. We'll wait patiently for that. It is. We're getting ahead of ourselves, right, Seema? We're just so excited. It <laughs> is. So excited for this dish. I can't wait, Alicia. We should Thank let you. her start. Huh? I've been looking forward for this dish all week. Really, me too. <laughs> you know, actually, um, Seemaji, this is actually inspired by your pumpkin kitchri, I must say. Uh, oh. this actually uh, because we Bless went to, you. we went to we came to visit you in Oxford um for context and you know for the viewers and uh you made us this wonderful pumpkin khichdi. Uh, I so did. It was a South Indian style khichri with mustard seed, tarka, and uh, yes. curry leaves, and you know, and that pumpkin flavor. I just remember I could not stop eating, and I kept going for seconds and thirds, and um, and I, the same thing. I was thinking about you know that that feeling of warmth and comfort. I decided that's what, which is why I decided to use pumpkin. Oh, bless you! I'm so touched. <laughs> I'm so touched. So at least I, I uh, that that very humble, simple, very easy, Kiran, I must admit, one pot, <laughs> throw everything in together, pumpkin kitchen, <laughs> led to such a great inspiration in black rice and vegetables and chickpeas. How wonderful is that? I feel so, so happy to hear <laughs> this, Alicia. Yes, dishes are invented in one of those days where you just like, you don't know what to do and you just throw everything in the pot and voila, you know. You have something scrumptious. You know? It's so no, true. Your creative juices get flowing, right? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Alicia, I'm feeling hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll begin. Um, thank you for the introduction. And uh, yeah, I'll walk through I'll walk through everything as we go, of course. And uh, as you can see, I hope you can see all the ingredients. I mean, obviously I have all the different colors here. So I have the vibrant, I, I went for a very ripe pumpkin, um, which is also generally sweeter. And I'm gonna actually show, show you how um, I develop a, a lot of flavor with the pumpkin, uh, which, is a, which is a trick that I use for a lot of sweet vegetables like butternut squash, pumpkin, um, you know, sweet potatoes and things like that, uh, rather than just boiling them down and cooking them down, what I actually tend to do is I caramelize them at the bottom of the pan first to release the sugar. So that's the first thing I'll be doing. So what you want to do is you want to get your, you want to come to a medium heat um, with, with your saucepan. And I'm going to be using everything over here is clean. 
Um, I'm going to be using uh, olive oil, uh, light olive oil, unrefined um, to cook with, because I think olive oil is really essential in a dish like this um, to bring out those extra flavors. But I don't cook with extra virgin olive oil because I feel, you know, it kind of kills the nutritional value of uh, extra virgin olive oil when you cook with it. So I go for the light olive oil. And essentially what this is, is when they uh, cold press the olive oil, you get the first batch of that really dark green extra extra virgin olive oil. Then you get the ones lighter and lighter in color. So this is a great one to cook with uh, because it's one of the lighter olive oils. Uh, so I'm going to use about uh, one teaspoon to begin with of olive oil. And I'm going to let that heat up slightly. And um, the thing I'm going to do first is caramelize the pumpkin a little bit. And this, uh, you know, you and that's why you want your pan on a medium, not high high heat, you don't want to burn the pumpkin, but a medium to high heat so that it caramelizes nicely and develops flavor at the bottom of your pan. Uh, I've also gone with uh, non-toxic cookware, which is environmentally, fr environmentally friendly as well as non-toxic uh, while cooking. So this is a cast iron uh, saucepan. Uh, so something like this is very, very good. It adds also more iron back into your food. Um, and um, but you could also go with steel, stainless steel, or you could go with uh, a clay pot or a Dutch oven. Those are great options as well. Uh, cast iron just happens to be one of my favorite as it's naturally nonstick as well, I feel. Um, and it doesn't really, it, you know, it doesn't really stick. I find uh, also, uh, since I've been uh, using non-toxic uh, cookware, I think the big concern that you know people ask is, does your food not stick to the bottom of your pan? And there's a very simple answer for that. It's in the technique of how you cook the food. So, you know, and you don't need a lot of oil for your food to not stick. You just need a little bit of oil and whatever it is you're cooking, you need to give it time. So you need to first allow it to cook and then it'll start releasing from the bottom of the pan on its own. And that the same the same goes for cast iron and stainless steel as well. You know, if you try and move, um, you know, whatever it is that you're cooking too quickly, that's when it starts to stick. So it just needs time. Um, so that's just a good tip to keep in mind if you know you're making a transition from a to, towards a non-toxic and sustainable household. So I'm going to go with all the pumpkin in there. Um, there used to be a time where I wasn't the biggest fan of pumpkin. And so when I developed this um, this technique for cooking pumpkin, for caramelizing it, I started to really enjoy the sweeter vegetables a lot more, the squash, the pumpkins, and you know, all these things. Um, you can also go with a pumpkin, and if you really don't like the sweetness of it in your savory food, you can also go for a pumpkin that's less ripe. So you can go for maybe a green pumpkin that's a little bit more yellow in color and it's not uh, too sweet. That would also be great. This just has more nutrients. Um, and so um, that's that's why I've chosen to go with it. And I've really um, started to enjoy vegetables that are prepared in this type of manner, caramelized them from the bottom, allow the pan to release them. Uh, and you'll see it'll start to develop you know, little sticky bits at the bottom. And that's where all that flavor is. So we're working in layers, you know, with a dish like this. Just because we're doing something quickly and because we're doing it, uh, you know, uh, for more convenience doesn't mean that we can't give love to our vegetables and whatever it is that we're cooking. Uh, we want to make sure that you are developing flavor in every process. So um, that's how I uh, go about a lot of my dishes. We develop flavor at every, um, at every level. So while I let this caramelize, I'm also going to add a little bit of salt. You can use sea salt or rock salt. I'm choosing to go with rock salt today. Um, and it kind of sticks and starts to cake a little bit. That's how you know that there are no anti-caking agents or anything like that in this salt because it'll tend to stick a little bit, but it just needs a little tap every now and again. 
um, and that's how you know it's pure. And so I'm just lightly salting and really just measuring with my eyeballs. I don't really measure much. Uh, I, you know, we've talked about this before. I cook intuitively, and so I find it to um, add as much or as little ingredient of each ingredient that I feel would be necessary. But uh, for context, it's about maybe half a teaspoon of salt. Um, and that will start to also help draw out the moisture of the pumpkins. You know, Alicia, I love it that you've chosen pumpkin because it's so rich in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, it really is vitamin C as well. It's, you know, I think anything with this type of color generally has a good amount of vitamin C. Even pumpkins have a lot of vitamin C. Uh, bell peppers, pumpkins, these types of uh, veggies. So very good for your immune system. And I believe that it's also low in calories, so it's a great weight loss food, some schools of thought suggest. Yes, uh, and yeah, you're right, that, that is true. I didn't think about that, but low in calories and adds natural sweetness uh, to your food and depth of flavor to your food as well. So overall, and very healthy. It gives, the, it gives every dish that really mm, feel, right? It's really comforting, comforting. Got that soft, velvety texture, you know, that mushiness to it. To it. And mushiness on your palate, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I read somewhere that it's also very good for the immune system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah. eyesight. Okay. Uh, I didn't know that about eyesight. That's, I know, I always thought it was carrots for the eyesight, but now we have pumpkin. That's great. Maybe because it's got a high vitamin A content, mm -hmm. perhaps, yes, you know, like carrots or orange and they have a high vitamin A content. But, you know, having said that, I just love pumpkin. And I do have a question to ask you, Adisha, if you don't mind. Is it in season right now in Delhi? Uh, it is. It's actually uh, pumpkin. You kind of get all year round. Uh, it's one of those crops that uh, they have two seasons, you know, you can sow seeds and grow them in October or February. So you can get a late harvest uh, just before the monsoons and just at the end of monsoons. And you can kind of extend the harvest into the monsoons if you just protect your crops. Uh, so that's how we get pumpkin all year round. And then they grow really well in the winter. Um, but we, we pretty much get them all year round in India. You know, in India, we have a tropical climate, especially in the plains. So um, the summer is so hot over here. I mean, winters over here are almost like UK summers. <laughs> I was uh, joking with mom like yesterday, with my mom yesterday and saying, you know, um, it's literally, it's, it's, a, it's winter. It's in, we're in the middle of winter right now. And it was 22 degrees yesterday in the afternoon and sunny. And that's a winter's day for us in Delhi. That's so, a crisp, which, Delhi, sunny winter. Yes. Which is wonderful. It's gorgeous yeah. weather. Really and gorgeous. And that's why we get uh, this type of produce even in the winter. Uh, and we pretty much, like I said, we have two, two seasons of harvesting pumpkin, really. One is um, sort of uh, late, uh, late summer, late monsoons. And then also pumpkins store really well. They don't really go off um very quickly sure. so i was you know i was asking um oh, look at that color I, I kind of want to bring you a little bit closer to this just to show that color that i've developed on you know that little piece in the center <laughs> and but, the caramelizing of the pumpkin must enhance its flavor right give it more sweetness to a certain level oh yes mm. now a lot of people might think that you know they don't a lot of people don't like the combination of sweet and savory or they don't like mixing sweet foods with their savory foods. I used to be like that. Uh, I used to like to keep my sweets and savory separate, but it's not the same type of sweet that you would get with sugar or a dessert. It's a different, it's a different flavor. It almost adds to the savory element of your meat. Uh, if that makes sense, I don't know if I'm making sense. But... Oh, absolutely. It's kind of um, like, you know, our Indian cooking. Basically, we add a pinch of sugar 
to all of those spices that we put in. It's just that yin and yang, you know, it makes the flavors um, uh, even more uh, bountiful to the palate, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's a different type of sweetness. Like I find it, it's not the same type of sweetness as if you'd add sugar. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I don't know, it almost enhances uh, the flavor of the savory in, in the dish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know how that makes sense. Maybe it's the same when with when you add flaky sea salt to you know your desserts because it brings out that sweet. Um, I don't know this. I don't quite know the science behind it, um, but it's that same concept of adding you know that sweetness to your to your savory dishes. For sure, it's not like the honey sweetness, you know. No, no. It's just a, a touch of that. Uh, which really balances well with everything else I see there, those, uh, especially the aromatics there um, yes. on your prep board. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go into details Spices. about mm -hmm. that as well. Um, so, so as you can see, this does take a little bit of time to develop the color, mm -hmm. um, but it's so worth it. I'm actually going to crank the heat up a little bit more. Um, I always find working on induction uh, cooktops a little bit more tricky than, you know, if, if I was to cook on a fire, I guess I'm just used to cooking on a fire a little bit more. But, uh, you know, I'm always scared of burning my food on an induction cooktop. But, you know, you want a good amount of heat to caramelize uh, that pumpkin. And I'll bring you closer again. <laughs> Um, just to, you know, just for context, if, you know, could, can you see all that, uh, mm -hmm. stickiness at the bottom, you right. know, right. all of that stickiness at the bottom, that is flavor, you know, so don't mm -hmm. swap out your pot, uh, cook everything else in this pot because, and deglaze all of that at the, you know. That's sticking. That's where the flavor is. That those brown bits and the, you know, the, that sticky brown sort of sweetness. And this is yeah. what you want your pumpkins to look like. This is what develops that flavor. And if you don't like pumpkin, if you're somebody that doesn't like pumpkin, I kind of grew up not really liking pumpkin, but cooking it this way really made me like um, pumpkin so much. Mm -hmm. I think the technical term for that stickiness is frond. Okay. Yeah. The food expert. Yes. <laughs> but course. you want that. You're right about using that to deglaze. And um, your onions are uh, at the most essential uh, aromatic for deglazing the fronds. Yeah. You know, I want to share. Yeah, I, mean, I want to share something here, uh, Karen. Alicia very uh, honestly said that, you know, a lot of people growing up don't like pumpkin I was one of those children I mean the closest I associated pumpkin to was Halloween mm -hmm. you know, because that was the only the time of the year where pumpkins would be seen in abundance and as we all know that in October in the United States they actually have National Pumpkin Day am I right Karen? Absolutely correct. But that's how much they celebrate this uh, the harvest. Pumpkin, and the harvest indeed and as time went by and I started you know, I, I, I matured and I started experimenting with different squashes. I, you know, was using the zucchini and butternut squash and pumpkin. I have grown to love pumpkin. Yeah. You know, I, there's so much you can do with one humble pumpkin. Exactly. I mean, but that, that's the thing. So, like, I mean, you're right. You know, I, I think mostly a lot of people feel like that. I mean, pumpkin does not offer any flavor on its own. So you have to enhance it definitely. And you can do so much with it, you know, just like the potato, the humble potato, you know, it's the same thing. You know, whatever you do with the potato, you do it right. It's just absolutely delicious, you know. I don't know if you can see that, you know, those sticky bits at the bottom yes. and that browning, that is liquid gold almost, you know, like this is what you want uh, for that flavor. So as you said, the onions are, you know, the, one of the most important things to take glaze mm -hmm. uh, because I guess they have a lot of um, moisture. 
Um, yeah, they do. And then they, they soak up. And then when they start caramelizing, they release all of their flavor. And it's just a match made in heaven right here, you know. Absolutely. And I'm going with that classic sofrito uh, base, you know, your mm -hmm. um, onions, carrots, and celery. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just letting the onions kind of do their thing. So has, anybody, has any of you ladies tried making pumpkin jam? I've made pumpkin chutney. Okay, close enough. Yeah. I've made pump, a spicy pumpkin chutney with jaggery and uh, the, you know, um, I grew up resisting actually a dish, uh, a, a dish my mom would make, which is a Bengali dish from uh, the uh, from Bengal in India, and it was known as she used to call it katimiti kadu. So it's a sour and sweet pumpkin. Kadu is pumpkin. And she would use the punch pour and the five spice, the Indian five spice, which I, I I love to compare the five spice we have in India with the Chinese five spice we have in Hong Kong. Of course, the flavors are totally different, different. completely yeah. different. And the five spice has nigella and fennel. So it's, you could also almost call it a pickling spice in India to a certain extent. And yeah. she would just have a base, crackle up the spices, allow their essential oils to be released mm -hmm. in the oil. And the medium of cooking she would use was mustard oil, which is also synergizes with Bengali cuisine. So she would smoke up the mustard oil, add in the asafoetida, add in the spices, add in the pumpkin, and she would add in jaggery. So what I did was I actually turned this into a chutney. So I I combined so see, it with you, you mentioned a magic ingredient right there, um, jaggery jaggery and pumpkin that mm -hmm. that marriage again you know it's beautiful yeah. it's beautiful and what i found was uh i did need to add a lot of apples into the chutney for the pectin right to you know like gel up and hold together mm -hmm. i used the five spice the bengali five spice and i kept the whole coriander and everything in it so you've got the spices crunching in your mouth yeah but yeah. you'd roast them, of course, slightly with the jaggery. And it was this jammy, spicy, yummy, really beautiful chutney that I would love to have on a cracker with cheese. Mm. I think the fiber in the pumpkin adds to that, if you know yes, what I mean. Indeed. Right? Yeah, indeed. It, that, that, that's what it is. You know. Indeed. In fact, so much so that you can see the stringiness as yeah. well of pumpkin in the chutney, you know. And you just spread it on, and it spreads beautifully as well okay. on a cracker. Mm -hmm. you know? Is that Sorry, garlic I'm you're adding? Garlic. Yes, garlic. Yeah. A healthy amount. Of garlic. Can you we tell the garlic. viewers why the gar garlic goes in later? Why we do oh, that? Yes. Um, so, as you said, uh, from my understanding, as you said, the sofrito, that very classic European base on your onions, uh, carrots, and celery are first used to release the moisture and help deglaze the pan. Uh, and so they, they themselves develop some color as well. Um, and then uh, you add the garlic later. Also, I think you need to give each vegetable and each aromatic time to develop the, its own flavor in the pan. You know, um, it, it almost it really frustrates me when I see videos online or, you know, uh, like, cooking videos and things and everybody's just added everything and close the you know all in one go and close the lid and I don't know I, I feel like you're um, you're missing out on what that vegetable and what what eat what each ingredient can offer you know so exactly right because, exactly yeah. right and also the fact that garlic burns easy yes can you imagine Absolutely. going through all of that beautiful work and then you put your garlic in at the same time and it burns well whilst oh. you're caramelizing? Well, then that's not going to give you any flavor, is it? Yeah, such a shame. <laughs> oh. and, yeah, but but like like you can see, I mean, uh, now the garlic is starting to soak and and brown just ever so slightly, um, and and when you add it later, it actually. Um, the garlic stays more fresh, you know, because mm -hmm. that burnt garlic flavor goes a little, you know, bitter. And that's not what we want. Yeah. You know? And and the bitterness uh, is also uh, not there. You know, another way I learned how to get rid of the bitterness from garlic was just um, 
simmering it for a minute in, in water and then washing it and simmering it again a little bit just to get that um, okay. strong bitterness out, out of it sometimes, you know, okay. depending on, on the recipe, what you're making, right? Right, right, of course. Yeah. Kieran, I read somewhere that every part of the pumpkin is edible. The skin, right. the leaves, the bud, the seeds, and the stem. The stem. That's would you good agree one. with that? Well, I don't know about the stem. Talk to me about the stem. What, how, how would you use the stem? And that's what I'm trying to think. How would I use? I mean, the stem would be too fibrous and hard, wouldn't it? Even if you use know. it, you, you can't eat it. So I'm trying to think. So I is it for broths maybe possibly possibly right? I would I would add it into a broth to be honest with yeah, you I would and wash it really and well then and discard add it. it discard and it discard it yeah least but there is again talking about bitterness if you were to taste the stem you would find a hint of bitterness in it almost mm, like um, interesting you don't want to eat it you know. So, but that's all I can think of, you know, depending on the recipe that uh, essentially it would be a broth, you know, uh, where you can use that. So the pumpkin is, was actually known by the Greeks as a people, mm. right? Which translates to large melons now. Uh, I, speaking of large melons, Alicia visited me in Oxford and I want to share this with you. It's about really minimizing waste to a certain extent. And she made me a watermelon skin spiced vegetable. Oh, yum. It was out of this world. Yummy. Thank you. I completely Alicia, forgot about that, you know. Can you tell us how you made that? Because it was so yummy. I, I finished that whole box that evening. <laughs> I'm and so glad you liked it. I mean, what inspired you behind making watermelon? My, now, my mom used to make watermelon kichirke, which she used to call it karbuz or tarbuz. I can't differentiate between. What is it in Hindi, Alicia? Tarbuz, karbuz? Uh, tarbuz. Tarbuz, okay. Tarbuz, which is watermelon. Tarbuz ki chilke ki sabzi, which translates to watermelon skin vegetable. And she yes. used to make it again with the Bengali spices of Paj and etc. Now you made something very similar and that ignited my soul because I had it after so many years. It was like and my grandma had... Watermelon pickles, you know. Oh, yeah. That's what they make here. But go ahead, Alicia, share your... Inspiration your... behind that. <laughs> yeah, the watermelon rind is actually edible. It's tough. It's very tough and hard. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to cook that down. You can either pressure cook it, although I don't tend to generally pressure cook uh, a lot of um, my vegetables, unless I'm in a hurry. But, you know, I like to really simmer them. Uh, but you want to cook that for a good one hour, if not more, uh, to help it break down. And then uh, and then use that uh, once it's softened as a sabzi, as you would any sabzi. And uh, what I did was I just put uh, simple Indian spices and made it into a sabzi, very simple, um, almost Jenny style sabzi. Um, so I just put some oil, I put uh, cumin seeds, I put uh, ginger, I put um, just uh, turmeric, salt, and uh, a little bit of coriander powder. I put the a watermelon rind, the cooked watermelon rind in. And I just gave that time. I put put some water, salted it, tasted it for flavor, a little bit of black pepper to activate my turmeric as well. That's just a trick that I always do. Um, but yeah, and the, it's it was as simple as that. And you know, you can add you if you want it more soupy, then you can add more water. And then you can have it on top of rice as something with gravy, or you can have it as a dry sabzi as well and have it with roti. Uh, with a flatbread. So it was really delicious. It was delicious. Such a simple recipe. <laughs> and you took me back to my grandmama. That was the best part. It was like she came down from the heavens above and said, okay, this little girl is going to make my granddaughter's dish. And it, isn't oh, it amazing? My. We've talked about this before, but how food connects us to stories and memories and, and so, so precious. Forth, that so that precious. cycle, right? Yeah. It's so it's precious. Amazing. And 
what I love about Alicia, I want to share this is Alicia, you're, you're never intimidated to try something new. And this girl is willing to give it a go, no matter what. She's got that zest in her, you know, that that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a shot, you know, like something like watermelon, vegetables, you know, you would think the younger generation would, wouldn't think twice. They say, okay, if they're more climate aware, let's compost it. But this girl actually went ahead, scrubbed the skin really well, cooked She's it up, so gifted, isn't packed she? it up, packed it up in a box so beautifully and brought it, drove her mom to Oxford. <laughs> and we had lunch together and she bought me and she said, see, my auntie, here's this watermelon subsidy. And I, oh, watermelon vegetable, sabzi is vegetable. For those of our viewers who don't understand what sabzi is, I just go off on, an in, on my Indian tangent when I remember my, my grandmother. And I thought to myself, you know, wow. And I had it in the evening with the chapati, which is an Indian flatbread. Even it was so tasty. Yeah. Delicious. I love, I love those stories. <laughs> yeah. And the simplicity of the dish. Look at the simplicity. Yeah. Hi, ladies. Hi, ladies. This is Nil Kumar. Uh, hello, Kiran. Hello, Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hello, Alicia. Hello. Uh, Alicia, hello. can you yes. pan the camera right bang into the pan at the moment? While you do that, we'll show the oh. viewers what's happening lately. Kiran, sure. Sima, Sima yes. you are from Kenya. I want to have your thoughts that the same recipe, but with a semi raw papaya. So we replace the pumpkin, but if we put semi-raw papaya, so it's still uh, hard but sweet. What are your thoughts, Kiran and Seema? Neil, are you talking about the green papaya? Yes, yeah, semi-raw papaya. So a semi-raw papaya would be green going towards yellow as it right, but it's semi-raw, so it's still solid because pumpkin is, but it's still sweeter. So as a direct replacement, what are your thoughts on this same recipe? Good question. Uh, interesting. Now, when you speak of semi raw papaya, it takes me back to Filipina cuisine, in fact, where they use raw papaya and they make this wonderful dish called tinola. So, and it's a non-vegetarian dish, but of course, my wonderful, beautiful helper back home in Hong Kong used to make me a vegetarian version with vegetable broth as opposed to non-vegetarian chicken broth they would make it with. And it's 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 a it's a very light broth with some ginger and some, um, some you know very mild uh, spring onions and salt and pepper basically. Filipina cuisine isn't very heavily spiced and it's absolutely delicious because the papaya softens in your mouth. But they use raw papaya. Right, now, same as in Thai curry. Same as in Thai curry or a Thai papaya salad. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, in the UK, finding a raw papaya can be a hard find unless you go to specialty shops. So you can luckily pick up a semi-raw one in Marks and Spencer's like I did for my dinner last night. And that worked pretty well, but the crunchiness was a little less. So a ripe, semi-ripe, a semi-raw papaya would be okay, but it won't be as sweet as the pumpkin. Am I right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not. It's the, the, and, it's not and you, you get that strong enzymatic taste of the papaya. I think the papaya has a leftover flavor, right? Mm -hmm. That's quite yeah, it, strong. It does uh, leave But it that could work mouthfeel. to a certain extent. Something to but, try. But there is a way to get over that. And the way, again, is like uh, what I suggested for garlic, what we do to remove the bitterness. It's exactly the same technique. And then you will get rid, rid of some of that, that, that medicinal, you know, uh, type of flavor in, so in the, the papaya. The yes. So we agree in those countries where pumpkin not, may not be in the season, Maybe they can try a raw or a semi-raw papaya. Of course, if the women are pregnant, then be careful and seek medical right. advice. Right. Well, I'm now going to pan into the camera because Alicia has nicely panned the camera closer. So it looks so away. good. I can see that. Wow. I've just added all the herbs and spices, well, herbs and the uh, seasonings. Uh, just to take you through that quickly. 
sorry, my camera is a little. I see a bay leaf flo floating. Yes, a bay leaf is essential here. If you're going to put anything in this dish, put a bay leaf for seasoning. Uh, it's it just it adds an earthy sort of nutty almost like an extra oomph of umami savory background flavor which is what i feel mm -hmm. um so this is essential and as, I put good, some as good as it is um always remind the viewer um that we must get rid of it because uh bay leaf can cause choking oh yes yes of course so uh we just uh remove that at the end mm -hmm. um and and sort of discard it or you can save it for later broths or or things like that but um i think once once you boil it once it uh, tends to take most of the flavor out of it so um i tend to discard it afterwards or put it in the compost uh, as i do with most of my um discarded uh, veggie scraps and things like that and then the other herbs i added were some dried rosemary and and thyme um for seasonings and salt and pepper and that is it it's as simple as that Beautiful. and then what you want to do is just put a lid on this and let this uh, simmer uh, for another five minutes so that everything uh, comes you know, together all the flavors marry and come together yes exactly and you're leaving the chickpeas i see till almost yes um so what what i do with this soup actually um is in another five minutes, I'll blend this up uh, with okay. my immersion hand blender and it'll become, you can, you can actually leave it chunky if you like. I would probably cut the pumpkin into smaller pieces though, if I were, if I were to leave it, uh, uh, if, if I were to not blend it. But since I'm blending it, I just chopped it uh, quite roughly and uh, thick. And I'm going to blend it and then I want the texture of that black rice and the chickpeas um, and as well as some spinach, some uh, freshly chopped spinach, which is in season right now, and which will add that color as well as more iron and more, you know, uh, fiber. So, so and in your opinion, what flavor is um, your preference? The flavor of blitzing the whole thing into a soup like consistency or leaving it chunky? I personally prefer. Uh, I, I love a creamy blended soup personally, but it really depends on your preference. Um, some people at home in my family like their soup chunky and not blended. So you can totally leave it the way it is and add your chickpeas and your rice, um, it, you know, if you like. I like uh, creaminess I'm too. Yeah, I like creaminess and I think it would be... Yeah. I mean, the rice is a great base, for, you know, for that creaminess. And then, of yeah. course, you have your integrity and texture from your chickpeas, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and likewise, the spinach, if you, leave, if you prefer to leave that as is as well, right? Would you say? Yes. Yes. Yeah. For the color, you know. Yeah, that vibrancy well. since you're putting it last, you know. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. And spinach doesn't need too much time to cook anyway. It takes a, literally 30 seconds, maybe, if not. 60 seconds, you know. Yeah. I um, love spinach. <laughs> oh, so I love, I, I love, 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 love spinach. It's one of my go-to veggies and I always have a big so bag. So easy to prepare. Seconds. In no time. It's a quick fix for anything, really. And, you know, what I love about your recipe, Alicia, is you've got that creamy texture. I'm a creamy, I love creamy soups as well, like you, Kiran. Is that creaminess... Uh, as a backdrop against the uh, nuttiness of the black rice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Works so beautifully, you know, and, you know, then you add the, you know, you add the green foliage, the, <laughs> the, the yeah, lovely yeah, spinach. Sure. It's almost like um, you have these flowers in a garden. I know, it's gorgeous. And then the, the black rice is kind of like the earth underneath. Absolutely. Yeah. So you're speaking I, I love, of all those um, levels. I'm, I'm intrigued and I, I can't wait to see the finished product, uh, Alicia's version of um, the consistency, the texture of the rice. You know, I'm not going to say anything. I, ju I just want to see how she uh, delivers that, you know. That's it's it's, it's, it's food fashion. <laughs> it's food fashion and it's poetry as well. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and it brings <laughs> memories. Beautiful. So Alicia, we come back to you in five minutes. Um, while it's sure.
Uh, so I'm going to cook this and I'm actually going to mute myself while I blend this um, yeah. so that, you know, there's no extra noise. Um, sure. But yeah, I'll, I'll blend this and then, yeah, you can come back to no me. No worries. About- Whilst you're doing that, Seema and I are going to jump straight into some of our sustainability tips, yes. and ideas and talking points that we'd love to share with everyone. What do you think, Seems? Oh, yes. This is a very exciting session today. You know, I've been looking forward to this session, like I said, for the Mm -hmm. past three weeks. I'm so excited when we decided, you know, we're going to come back together and do it at the last week of January. It's a new year and why not? Yeah. And with something so meaningful. Yeah. And then I definitely would love, love, love our viewers' um, opinions and their take on you know, we're going to, what we're talking about and how we did and what more they'd like to hear about, but we'll come back to that uh, when we um, end the the topic. So everybody, hello. Hi, Kiran. Kiran. Yes. Just before you go ahead. Yes. You mentioned you were at Lux Farm where again, there was a lot of organic farming and they are, they are into food sustainability. Yes. Uh, presently, their website is under construction, but then that organization does wonderful outreaches, which I just want to show the viewers. Thank and you. can slightly explain. And then later in 2024, where we plan a retreat there, our viewers can know more about it. Thank and Kiran, it might be interesting because since you are also involved in African countries and other places, this is something where we can join the force. So Sima, this is what they do, Lux Farm. So the Lux team actually does all these projects within their foundation in the school pictures, and they actually do this kind of facilities as well. They do tuition centers, teacher training, yes. etc. And I think our Kiran and you will be very instrumental. So at some point, maybe in 2024, before we go there, you two can do a site visit or something. Go ahead, over. It's um, it's they're doing a lot of good work there and as you can see the lunch team is over there the teachers you know and i uh you have the first lady on the left is with the white hair is my aunt and right next to her is my uncle and that's my cousin and that's my aunt's friend and that's someone else who's very fundamentally the rest of the people are all very fundamentally contributing to all the good work that my aunt, who I'm so, so proud of, is doing. And uh, like I said, she's uh, she's got a lot of heart. Yeah, what a beautiful a family doing such beautiful work. That's that's very admirable. Well, Kieran, you're doing the same with the Malawi Children's Mission, you know, in uh, Malawi. Yeah. Uplifting the lives of children, providing education. You're doing so much work we're, there. We're trying. We just got hit with cholera there. You know. Kiran, I want to ask you, yes. under Seema, who was actually born in Africa and has affinity, I believe you are not African-born Indian or you are not from Africa. So why affinity with Africa? How did you connect with the project? Because it's very exciting. Lovely. I want to Question. know more about it. My daughter married an African gentleman. She's uh-huh. married to a, a yeah, uh, somebody from uh, Malawi, you know, and he's half British and half African. His dad was African and his mom is English, you know, from the UK. They were married a year and um, we just, uh, you know, went there and said, this is what we'd like to do with a very good friend of ours. And will you young folks support us. And my son-in-law was like, I've always had a heart for um, the children here. And um, this just, this is the poorest country in the world and all over Africa and, and in all of Africa. And this is where my heart is. And this is something I would I'd be delighted to do. He took my husband to the village to meet the chief and they approached the chief and asked if we could help their children. and. The chief was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> that's wonderful. And that's how it happened. And, and they're the, the people behind it, both of them, Avisha and Kenneth, you know, they help us run the whole organization. And Kiran, I remember 
you spending some time with them obviously they didn't have as much facilities as the western kitchen would so you adapted with the facilities what they had and then you found a cost effective way of creating nice healthy meal i want to know more about that oh my gosh those stories i'm going to cry now <laughs> you know um yeah not easy but then you know the motivation behind it is our children and the people who who are their friends their community and or work with them they're all like kind of like my mantra i can do this we can do this we'll make it happen let's do it you're here let's do it and and, and we did uh, my daughter has a restaurant called hosteria italian restaurant and she said mom let's just work on this project as well and that will be our way of uh, giving back to our community as well and then we can teach the chefs and you can help us with the regulatory work and and new menus and vegan and use what we have here and and then we ended up doing a garden for them in the restaurant and there are so many stories so many things you can do so many ways you can touch I remember the first time we went there she was like mom you have to stay a night at the tea plantation and they're friends of ours and you would enjoy it so we went to the tea plantation met the founder had dinner with him oh my gosh the stories that he told me that that first year about what the young children have to go through um, to be able to survive there and how they have to take care of their siblings. I just, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't stop crying. And I said, if I can do anything, I, I want to take that burden away from young children. Why should, why should our children, I mean, why should young children have to take care of their siblings? What happens to the parents? Why they why do they need to beg for a cup of sugar or whatever? So it's like as long as it is within my power, I want to make that change. And we did, and we grew. You know, from I started with nutrition, and then from nutrition went to education, which is very near and dear to my heart. I believe everybody should be educated. By the way, my books are in the library, and that's my desire. I want to plant a book in every library that I know of and travel to. You know, make sure everybody has the book in in their hands. And um, then it became. Uh, um, health facilities and um all of that it just it just took off it's been almost 17 years now and what a delight oh, <laughs> you can oh. see i still get so excited you know it's been um, so kiran while we are in the live show here seema i'm going to put you into an exercise if you contact our coordinator of east africa mina ben kagram and send a report of this school in uh, in is it was it Zambia or Zimbabwe? Malawi. Malawi, yes. So if you could send the report for Malawi, why don't we with Mala, who is our guest later, he can we can explore this possibility of helping the African countries, wherein each of the local borough or a council in the United Kingdom could maybe sponsor within that country. So Mala can take care of that going to the councils here, boroughs, and say, hey, look, we are into fruit project. We have identified maybe this potential schools or something, and Mina Ben can maybe coordinate with a couple of schools in, uh, in Kenya, and Sanjay, our coordinator in Uganda. And I think if we start talking about that, and when Mala comes in her show, and because she's now part of the kitchen stuff, she's here actually right now, Mala, I'm just going to pull you into the screen because this is exciting and I want this happening, please. I'm going to unmute as well. Hello, Mala. Hello. Namaste, everybody. Thank you, Mala. Mala, you are, you are actually one of the guests uh, of the team and at 4.30, you are with Kiran, etc. So, Mala, this is exercise is for you as well. Like how we talk, we discuss about Lambert, we discuss about brand, we discuss about other councils that we are working with. If we can convince them that the project that they are very keen on the food and waste and safety and everything, Kiran already has got experience and, and have got hands-on knowledge as to how she got the Malavians uh, excited. Seema is from Africa and would have some contacts there. I'm from Africa. Mina Ben, who is listening actually off the screen in this program right now, 
Let's get this project. And our Dr. Rajiv Gupta, who is leading it smart, think smart, be smart. Food, if we can get to the younger generation and we can teach them plant-based food, food sustainability, food waste, don't waste the food, don't lose the food and things like that. If we can case the children, then 20, 20 years from now, we can form a solution that will help the, the mankind for years to come. So Seema, maybe you, Mala and Kiran can exploit this because this is a live project that we can bring on healing and healing actually creates projects like this while they are going on a live show. Over to you ladies, I'm going to bring Alicia. I think she wants to show you something, Kiran. And then Kiran, you and Seema carry on. Mala, we'll see you back in a while. Keep on and thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Neil. That's awesome. Thank you. Awesome, wonderful. Kalisha, we are so excited to see your dish. <laughs> Thank you. I just, I just wanted to say as well, uh, Kieran, when you were talking about the work that you were doing and the stories that you, you know, heard and how you um, changed lives and you know about educating people, you just had this big smile on your face. You know, um, I think it really means a lot to you to be able to give back and. I mean, which is so fitting because you really believe in Seva, of course. Um, but uh, I, I think that brings you pure joy as well. It's always you know? around, right? Handy yes. dandy. It's always around yes. in every library if we want this, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> and it just lit you up. And that was so nice to Aww. see. This is such kind words. Thank you, my darling. That's beautiful. I mean, even what you're doing, who knows where you will end up, where it will take you. This is just the beginning, the this, the planting the seed moment for you. you know? um, and you're planting lots of seed for our generation, uh, seeds for our generation to absorb you. the you know kind of work that you're doing. So thank you that as well. Thank you. Have Most importantly is that connection. I mean, that will just blow you away when you um, connect yeah. with Patty. And I'm going to get on top of that right away. Yes. Oops. Oh. Lovely. Why I... That's lovely. Yeah. So, so here's the story right here, right? Okay, so they, she's, these two girls have been in our school for 11 years now. And now that joy of writing about them, that they got their degrees, they're educated, and oh my gosh, they're going to go out. One of them is going to be working in hospitality. And you can imagine how that touched me, you know. One is doing agriculture and it's it's amazing. This is the reward that we received uh, a few weeks ago. You know, hearing their graduation, it's like yes. <laughs> this is so yes. it's so fulfilling, Kiran. So it is fulfilling. liberating. Well, yeah. Congratulations, like your family. Congratulations. Too. Well done. Thank Bravo to to all of you. We're all in the same boat here, right? So amazing. Yeah. You know? Thank you. Oh my gosh, there's the creaminess. I can almost smell it. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> hungry after seeing this dish. As she describes the um, bay leaf. Yummy. It's very good. <laughs> uh, oh, I um, feel like I always, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you're you always hungry after every show that I do. I feel, you know, I wish yeah. I could just feed everybody and, you know. Can I, can I just bring up a point, you know, what you did? Can you hold up that bay leaf again? Oh. Yes, uh, one second. So Sorry. what we've done here is we have a very distinguished guest coming up shortly, and she's going to be so proud to see <laughs> that Alicia discarded that bay leaf <laughs> because she is our um, food safety expert, isn't she? So she's going to want to make sure that we show that. So thank you, Alicia. You made thank me you. proud. <laughs> Thank you. you so I'll fi I'll finish this off very quickly because it's it's pretty much done, uh, okay. and and then I can um, you know we can come back over to you. So I'm just adding in the rice. This is pre cooked. Mm -hmm. and... Tell me, describe that that um, the the texture of the rice to me. I see a little bit of creaminess there. Yes, it's actually uh, even though it's much lower on starch, it yes. is 
quite thick. It does have starch, of course, sure, uh, but sure. not as much and not at a higher, not at such a high glycemic index as white rice. But did it's you, lovely. Did you rinse it a few times? I did. I rinsed it uh, once, uh, sorry, twice, and the water actually turns red, like this deep, dark, almost like a purple carrot, you know, like a black, purpley carrot, that same color. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was the water. So I discarded that and then I let it soak for about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I discarded that water as well. And then I cooked it in some fresh water. Uh, mm -hmm. I just simmered it on a low heat for about 25 minutes. Okay. And then, yeah. and then I drained the water. It's beautiful. Thank you. So yeah, like you would with normal rice, I guess. So this is lovely and it's got a nice bite to it. Yeah. So it's a little bit nutty and earthy, but it's got a lovely flavor. You still get the feeling that you're you're eating rice. So it's very comforting, you know. Yeah. Um, so I'm adding all of this in. Have you ever played with it like you would quinoa in a salad? Yes. Uh we so at the retreat actually, we did one of uh one one of our recipes. We do a lot of salads with every meal. So we did a black rice salad. Um, you know, uh, with crispy chickpeas um, mm -hmm. and um, and bell peppers and fresh lettuce leaves from the garden and herbs, dill, parsley, spring onions. You know, and with a lovely vinaigrette. Um, it was so. Yeah, we did we did a black rice salad, and it was did so the, did the rice as it cooled. Was it uh, did it uh, did it end up drying a bit and coming out like nutty? You know, crunchy. Yes, uh, not crunchy, but it was. It did have that little bite to it. Yeah. Um. You know, like like you mentioned, but yeah. it wasn't crunchy. What we did though with the salad is we, uh, we put some chickpeas into a oven baking tray, drizzled it with some olive oil, put some herbs and spices, and we let it uh brown and crisp up, and that was the crunchy element in the salad, and that went really well with the black rice and all the other fresh vegetables and and, and fruit. It's just, I haven't played with black rice in, I don't know, I want to say like maybe eight or nine years. So I'm okay. thinking, yeah, so I've kind of forgotten, but um, I was just wondering about the different textures. So last question to you uh, regarding the rice. Can you make a risotto out of this, in your opinion? You can. You absolutely can, because it is actually very, very creamy. Yeah. And you know, like a like a typical risotto that you know you would um, mm -hmm. you would cook the rice slowly and you'd add yeah. a, one one or two ladles at a time, allow that to cook, and right. you know allow the starches to release. Yeah. Uh, when I cooked when I cooked this black rice today, the I actually had to rinse it uh, because it was so creamy and you know and thin. exactly. And I saw that creaminess. That's why risotto risotto yeah. came to mind. Yes. So then. Um, it would be great. And would do, so when you've made the risotto, do you uh, keep it uh, al dente, or is it more creamy? Um, I I make sure that kind of like the white rice, like it's traditionally cooked. It is that little, very slightly al dente, yeah. but uh, it is it is cooked through, um, like like a typical risotto would be. Um, but I think it depends on your preference as well. Yeah. Um, I would I would probably have it nice and creamy and just leave that little bite that al you know that that al dente bite like the Italians do. Yeah, um, and then find a beautiful contrasting uh, garnish for it, huh? Yes. Yes. And I would probably, I would probably do it in a mushroom broth or something, and maybe put some truffle oil and parsley and deglaze it with some white wine you know something like that yeah yeah, um, yeah. yum that, yeah. So, so this is done. just <laughs> one recipe we were able to tear it down to like <laughs> i don't know how many we came up with <laughs> you know can i add something over here sure. you know, the 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 koreans really emphasize on rice what this is this is my ayurvedic beauty wisdom coming in here like, you know like eat yourself gorgeous perhaps so a lot of the uh, Koreans, this is diverting from the topic, but I'm just bringing it, use rice water for their skin. Uh, yeah, and I was just reading that uh, black rice, for example, is known to have particles that heal and soothe the skin. Mm. So assuming we don't throw the water, yeah, 
It's very rich in antioxidants, which actually protect our skin so, from free you, radicals. So are you talking about like a, a, a mask or? No, no, just the water. So what the Koreans actually do is when they wash their rice, they keep the water. Mm. They reserve the water and some of them actually oh. store it up in a spray bottle and they allow it to ferment for a day or two and then they spray it on their face. Ah, interesting. It's very I've interesting. I've heard about this. Interesting. Yes, so I'm just thinking, I was just reading up on black rice and it says that mm. it's very rich in antioxidants, mm. you know, which helps keep those free radicals. Uh, and it's really great for your hair as well, uh, rice water. Uh, it's, yes. It's oh my God, it's very good for your hair, and it's almost like keratin treatment. In fact, I and I've it. tried it. I've tried it. So what I've done is I've gone the Korean way, not with the black rice that keeps the free radicals at bay, that helps you have smoother skin. But I'm assuming it's the same thing with white rice as well. But with white rice, I have reserved the water. I have allowed it to ferment, and I have used it in a spray bottle on my skin on my hair and it gives you that straight like you've had a keratin treatment so what you do for those of you who want to know how to use it just on dry hair spray your hair with the rice water allow it to sit for about 25 30 minutes and then wash and shampoo your hair and you will notice the difference also rice water is known to enhance hair growth if you add rosemary into it even better mm -hmm. and it stimulates your hair follicles and enhances hair growth so Food is medicine, yes, but there's so much that can be done with food. We can Absolutely. compost it. We can, you know, first and foremost, we can use it to, you know, nourish our bodies, nourish our soul. I mean, the way we eat it, the thoughts we have when we prepare it, we nourish our mind and body. And we can use it in our beauty products. You know, we can compost it. There's so much we can do with food. But the problem is we're not doing enough and our like coming back to the topic that Kiran and I would love to discuss is that our world is facing a crisis. Mm -hmm. What and do we Seema, do, Kiran? And Seema, just before you do that, uh, Alicia is now ready to serve us uh, remotely. But before that, Kiran's dream is to see this book on every shelf. So let's maybe see that. I love that. <laughs> uh, this is actually a book written by my mum. Can you believe that? And so, yes, I'm going to buy the book. There's my mum there. Can we zoom in? Isn't she gorgeous? And I think I, in fact, well, I think I am pretty much predominantly featured in this book. I assume so, considering I'm a son. Uh, if you get a chance, come and buy this book. You can buy it online as well. Uh, do it for me. Thank you. Let's see him. I like why I why you, I, I, you I, just I, won't let that one go. Sima, Sima, let me tell you why I like this plug. If the own son thinks that mom is beautiful, the own son thinks that mom is talented and everything, then the book has got to be good. It's a wonderful book. It really is. And it's got a lot of meaningful messages in it, Kieran. Thank you for that book. <laughs> Oh, it's a, such a joy, such a delight. Um, my other book made it to this week, made it to the NYU um, AD library. Did you guys catch that? No. The New York you. University oh. Abu Dhabi library. Fantastic. <laughs> it's the humanities and arts library. Fantastic. Is that amazing? <laughs> it's amazing. That is wonderful. It's oh, amazing. look at that. That is yeah. amazing news. And we have an amazing dish as well with amazing news. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> that oh, is one great bowl of comfort. <laughs> it's hug in a bowl. I love it. Yes, that was the uh, that was the goal with this recipe. But congratulations, uh, Kieran, that is fantastic news and it just goes to Absolutely. show the kind of work that you yeah. are doing. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. The the voice carries on, right? Uh, but back to your, your dish, I see it glistening. Um, yes. That looks tempting. See the colors. I, I love textures, you know. Yes. And, and I see, you know, every ingredient floating there and yeah, you just... Yeah. 
that's, that's yes if you want if you want more texture like i said you could leave the soup chunky and not blend it mm -hmm. i think because you've got these textures i go for the creamy background and i blend definitely. the rest of it definitely so i'm all for that to you. that's okay. beautiful yes. thank you beautiful. so much i think big applause to you my dear hats off that was wonderful i mean from one recipe we were able to you know put our thoughts together and come up with so many different things including hair care and uh, face care and all of that right Seema that's Thank the you. Cra that's the that's the craziness in me you know I I'm known to like I think I've said this hundred times on heating our earth mommy please stop turning our bathroom into a kitchen <laughs> you need the good coffee grounds here or some food stuff here or something there or some rice water fermenting in a bottle I and I'm like here yeah, you're yeah, right it's so good for you I, I love everything that you do, Seema. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I chase my girls around the house and I'm like trying it. And they're like, oh, no, 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 maybe later, you know. Yeah. But I'll convert That's them someday. But That's Alicia, right. before we let Alicia go, it would be nice for her to meet our guest. Maybe yes. a couple of words for one another, you know. Absolutely. Alicia, are you okay with that? To, to I, know you, I know you have to go. No, that's okay. I'm, yeah, I'm happy. let's let's do it. I think it would be interesting for the two of you to meet. Of course, you know? of course. And can we have Mala on? Yeah, I'm just checking. I think she's uh, fallen off. Maybe. I am. Yeah, hello. Oh, how are you? How are you? Welcome. Oh, I am buzzing with excitement, and we all, I, we all just sing the same song. We're on the same page, and I just have these butterflies in there. There's so much that we connect with everything you said. Oh, uh, you're awesome, Mala. May I just quickly introduce you to our viewers so they can say hi to you? Sure. Mala is a surplus food champion, ambassador, and change maker, who is also a great humanitarian who helps people and children that do not have the basic means to live a decent life in society. She's a strong believer in justice and equality for all and loves to embrace nature. She has a deep yearning for her spirituality to explore what's beyond our being. Mala has created a unique place for people to feel welcome and socially included in her community. She's a strong believer in sharing skills, knowledge, training, and development in a multi-generational society. Welcome, Mala. What an honor to have you with us today. Namaste. Namaste. Lovely to meet you, Mala. Very warm global namaste. Thank you for having me on the show. And I'd like to say thank you and welcome to all our Healing Our Planet, our Earth uh, participants and uh, guests. I'm actually very uh, privileged to be on the show because it's my subject and I think I have a lot of in common as well. And I find this in education uh, to enhance my life and the people around me uh, to share knowledge. Yes. Uh, I just wanted you and Alicia to to connect um, and, and just impart with words of wisdom or a question perhaps from Alicia um, so that, uh, you know, she has a piece of you to take away with her this, this afternoon. Yes, uh, namaste, uh, Kiyomala. Thank you for being here. It's such an honor to have you and join our Healing Our Earth family. Um, and, and be on this series with us. Um, and just hearing some of the work that you know you do has touched us and has uh, really, um, you know, I guess in a in, in a limited way told us who you are, but I'm, I'm sure you know you can uh, embark on that and share your wisdom and share what you do in even more detail so that you know we're able to understand what, what it is you do in, in more depth and we're so excited and looking forward to uh, hearing what it is they are all about and what drives you I think that's for me the one question I have is what what drives you to do what you do uh, what drives me I it's the lack of what I see around me that drives me. The hunger to educate and make changes with what we have 
and what's existing all around us. And there's so many gaps and I get so passionate and hungry and uh, I just want to make change and use my skills and knowledge to co-create, co-produce and co-design and to create a local economy. And uh, what I did over the years, I come my backgrounds, transportation, logistics and uh, database systems. Um, and I, I was very passionate about food. I always have been. And one day I prayed to God. I said, mm. I like doing all of this. You gave me a great career. Everything was great. Life and money was good. But there's something missing. And I thought I was fulfilled in my career. And I thought, oh, gosh, I really care about these food banks and people that need food. But there's so much of food going to waste. And all I see is documentaries. So I tapped into a food bank over the years, about 20 years ago. And I started to help somebody at a food bank develop her organization. And then one thing led to another, a hobby. I loved it. My mom used to say, are you working or contracting? I'd pretend like I'm working, you know, I was cooking for the poor and the needy <laughs> and using surplus food to get them fed. I loved it so much. I didn't really care about work as well. Anyway, one thing grew to another. And then my networks grew uh, bigger. I, I trialed. Uh, best before foods that's where my projects are born from best before foods uh, that were dated like 10 years old and I was cooking that like another 10 years later uh, and these foods came from eastern Europe from Romania Bulgaria I couldn't read the the hieroglyphics their, their writings but we try these foods at a community center and, and get that out to the local families now, the locals didn't understand best before, best after on labels. So they didn't, rejected the food and it wasn't their cultural background and they wouldn't. So I'd spice it up and include their little you know, ingredients from their cultures. And wow, there was my project born. And then I saw a gap for training people and educating people on how to not waste food and use surplus food. But then I networked with the national uh, and global uh, retailers. They love my work. I prototyped their cooking and made it safe. And some of it went on BBC One's billion dollar chicken. And then one thing led to another. So my community groups and Lambeth Council called me up to trial and prototype some of my work. Public health loved it. And they said, we need to get more people in our borough healthy, targeting children, so my colleague and I, we prototyped uh, healthy eating food bags. So I accessed surplus food through my surplus networks. And it was strictly about fruit and vegetables in the diet and tackling it from an early age. So we worked with, it was a research project, project, which turned into a funded project and created employment as well. Uh, so we identify people in the community uh, through local practitioners that have needs uh, and we'd get them fruit and vegetables. Now, I don't know what I'm getting for the day from the surplus uh, logistics people. I could get just anything really uh, or any type of fruit and vegetables. So we create food bags and give them recipes uh, and you have to quickly make that up because you have time limits. And then we exchange recipes. Then we uh, created WhatsApp groups where the families would take that food bag and they need to cook that to prove to me that it's sustainable and that you know they could come every week to collect a free food bag. And it, it was education. And I loved it when the little four-year-olds would come in and go through the little bags, what's in there, and then identify. So we got a conversation going. And then I started a food ambassador program and the food ambassador, uh, food ambassador program uh, was to it was to give the community an opportunity uh, to lead cooking sessions in their community. So we'd eat together and cook delicious meals uh, for their families. But it also gave it was always giving back to the community and to create change on a greater level. And it is a unique experience to connect with like minded people. Uh, you guarantee to have fun. And the aim was to make people self-sufficient using fruit and vegetables and making them resilient and giving them that autonomy and influence for their community. So I wanted to make an impact and that's the impact I made. Social inclusion, uh, created a diverse space for them 
for people to co-create, co-design, co-produce, because I didn't want to create the projects just for them. I wanted to create it with them. And what we got out of them, they've made new friends, shared recipes, they're eating healthier, and they've been sharing cooking ideas and sharing their cultural cuisines on a, in a community. Uh, and what I learned from this was, I was learning every day myself. I was an educator, but I was also learning. I learned about people's behavioral patterns, about their cultures, about their foods, etiquette and mannerisms around food as well. And, and the impact. And we were one pot cooks because I had four hours to cook, get the food, and we eat as a family in a community setting. And I love the idea, Alicia, when you talk about a one pot cook. And in these cooking sessions, I train them how to bulk up their food because if they have growing children, they, it's, it's quite expensive, especially if they're on low income. Oops. I think we lost Marla for a minute there, Karen. Yeah. Well, freeze mode. What she's doing is incredible. She's going to be back. She'll jump back straight yes. on with us yeah. in a minute, I'm sure. But isn't what she's doing, I'm, I'm, Alicia, I'm, I'm, incredible? Just blowing my mind, yeah. Is that it? Kiran, yes. Kiran, while you are there, when Marla comes and she's back, Hansa has also joined. Yeah. So maybe if you want to have a quick chat with Hansa and she can stay on and chat with you later. Mala is I'm just going to instruct her. Mala, I'm going to put you on a screen. Uh, nobody talk for a moment. Mala, if, you, if you've if got anything else playing on your computer or any other screen, close all the screens or any Netflix or anything so your bandwidth is completely clear. Over. Okay, yeah. I don't have anything on at the moment. Yeah. I'm free, yeah. Okay, Mala, Mala stay on. Uh, Kiran yeah. will quickly introduce Hansa, who is part of our team as well, and she'll give a bit of chat, and then Kiran will bring her back again, and everything is going good. I can see women empowerment through and through. Thank you, Neil. Hey, Hansa, how are you, my dear? Oh, hi, Kiran. Lovely to see you and global namaste to all Global the namaste to audience. you. Very warm welcome. It's so lovely to have you here. Um, I'm sorry about the yeah. slight delay. Sometimes it happens. We get so carried away and excited yes. what we're doing and we just let it go, you know. Well, so, I can completely um, understand because the uh, discussion so far was so fascinating. So have you have you been here for a while? Like you you've I've been here for a little while, yes. Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. caught up on some of the stuff. Did you see Alicia's beautiful one? Oh yes, uh, Alicia, your recipe was absolutely delicious. And uh pumpkin is something I've not tried before. So I was really, really inspired to maybe uh, include that in my uh, diet and the recipe that she shared. Um yes. sounds amazing. And also she's reminding us to. Uh, eat uh, red and black rice. Uh, again, uh, that is a very timely reminder. Um, and you. some of the tips and discussions have been absolutely fascinating. So yes, Thank I'm really you. enjoying the program. Uh, there's something- And then we have the Seema, of course, who, who just, you know, just dives into whatever comes to her. <laughs> we'll put it on our skin, we'll put it on our hair, you know, the same recipe and just goes on and on. I'm just like so tickled when Seema comes on and shares. Her mind just goes <laughs> everywhere. I know, my mind goes everywhere. It's so dangerous, Love it. I tell you. But, yeah. you know, having said that, Alicia, that dish you have made, I can't stop thinking about it. I mean, the whole bowl is in my head. I'm thinking, <laughs> no, shall I make it today? No, I don't have enough time. I'm going to make this tomorrow. I mean, Did I'm you just hear think... what Seema just said? She said, that whole bowl is in my head. You <laughs> see, it's in my head. <laughs> it's not you going that away. <laughs> I'm just thinking of this bowl of hot, comforting, you know, pumpkin with that corn and the black rice. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, and I'm, yeah. I'm already th thinking of different ways of doing it. You know, but what if I had it? She had it, yeah. rosemary and bay leaf to it. Fantastic. What if I did Southern Indian spices on that with uh, mustard and cumin and safetida yeah. and chili and, you know, uh, all these crazy ideas are going through my head. We love, it. We love your ideas. We love your ideas. Yeah, amazing. So, Seema, uh, 
see if you agree with me, just to be respectful to Hansa and to Mala, everybody's been waiting. We're just gonna push our dialogue to towards the end. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring Hansa on board and maybe she'll give a couple of lines um, to tell us a little bit about her. And then I just want her to give give her free way to just talk about sus sustainability. Um, that's her expertise here. So let's just do that. And then we'll bring Mala in. How's that? Cool. Hansa, uh, you have the platform. Oh, hi, Kiran. Uh, yeah. So just to do, make a little correction, I am not an expert in sustainability. <laughs> I'm somebody who is very passionate about it and I'm beginning my journey. As you know, uh, my expertise is uh, natural well-being and I am now interested in the relationship between sustainability and well-being, which there clearly is because um, I'm sure um, Seema will agree with me on this. She's the Ayurvedic specialist, but the Ayurvedic uh, principle is that we are all made of the same elements as the earth. So we made of you know earth, fire, water, air, um, and the same elements that the, the planet is made of. So if because of climate change, um, the elements of the planet change, inevitably it's going to impact on our health. Uh, so. The, the area that I'm interested in at the moment is to uh, research the connection between well-being and sustainability. And I'm kind of starting my journey to live as sustain, sustain, sustainably as possible. I mean, some of the things I've started to do is to grow my own vegetables. And you were all talking about the Lux project and how wonderful it is to um, eat organic vegetables, but the uh, the joy of uh, picking something from your garden and straight to the plate is something out of the world. So I would encourage all of our listeners today to try and grow their own vegetables. Not only is this good for your health, it's also very good for the planet. Um, and there's also stuff about uh, not wasting food. So whatever ingredients you have in your fridge, make sure you find a way of, of using them, turn it into a broth, turn it into some kind of a stir fry, you know, turn it into, freeze it. And you, if you, if you, um, I was, when I was doing my research, I was quite surprised to learn that there's loads of things that you can freeze. So you can freeze cheese, you can freeze the uh, eggs, you can, if you beat the eggs up and put them in the freezer, they just stay as fresh as, as if you had uh, used a fresh egg. So there's, there's so many ways that you can um, uh, not waste food. Uh, one of the things is to shop local um, and uh, use um, ingredients that are local. Um, where I live, uh, there is not much chance of doing that. There's, all supermarkets where I am. Uh, it's very difficult to find organic food around me. So, um, uh, you know, I, what I do is I get a delivery for organic food, but that's the only way I can, I can access it. Uh, and I think uh, we've talked about composting already. Um, so it's very important not to put food in refill in, um, in in landfills, because when the food goes in landfill, it uh, produces methane and carbon dioxide. So just try and compost as much food as you can. And uh, I was doing some re reading last week and I came across something called the Bukashi bin, which is kind of a Japanese invention. But it's in that bin, you can um, uh, compost uh, cooked food, you can compost raw food, you can almost compost anything. So that's something that I'm going to look into. Um, uh, foraging is another thing I've started to do. So uh, Kieran, you know that uh, I'm an author and uh, at this moment I've, I've written quite a few books on well-being. And the book I'm writing at the moment is uh, my own journey of trying to live sustainably. So I'm making all these discoveries uh, as I am um, traveling this journey. 
Um, and, and I've started foraging, which is something that I never did. And I'm discovering that you can eat things like dandelions. So you can eat the whole dandelion plant. So you can use the flowers, you can use the roots, you can use the green. Uh, and the other day I made a, uh, I made a dandelion fritters, you know, and Poppy was absolutely horrified. He said, you can't eat that, you know, you get ill. <laughs> and, uh, but actually they turned out to be very <laughs> delicious. So if you just mix them with a bit of basin and spices, and then you just make them like you make the normal fritters, um, they taste absolutely delicious. Yummy. And I then, love dandelions and I know Seema does as well. Where yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, we were talking about greens earlier on. So, and the, the sag that you make. So, when you make the sag, you can um, put the dandelion greens in it as well, because mm -hmm. the dandelion greens are very, very nutritious. Right. Uh, so, that's something I'm discovering. So, I've tried uh, nettle tea, I've tried nettle fritters. Uh, obviously, when you pick the nettles, you have to ha have some gloves because they are very prickly. Yes. So that's something that I never did. But as I am um, doing my research, I'm, I'm having these new experiences, which is absolutely fascinating. You know, so the, the foraging is something that I'm doing. I've made some jam from blackberry, uh, uh, blackberries. And so I go foraging for that. I go foraging for nettles and dandelion. And I'm looking a little, little bit into what else you can forage. Um, so that's an, a, another thing. Um, Did you start your gardening program that we talked about a yes. few months ago? Yes. Yes. So mm -hmm. I I started to, like I said, grow my own vegetables, yeah. um, which is something that I've never done either. So I grow, last year I grew um, courgettes, um, I grew loads of things, beans, uh, cucumbers, marrows, tomatoes, uh, loads of herbs. Um, um, loads of things. Oh, I also managed to grow my own aubergine, so I was really surprised oh, at that. Wonderful. <laughs> Have you uh, joined any, you know, newsletters or clubs with other home gardeners or anything? Yes. Like so, yeah. So I get a, um, I get uh, blogs from my local allotment um, a yeah. team. So every month they tell you what to do. Perfect. So I'm, I'm following that. I'm, I'm following that. So again, this is a very new experience and a new journey. Sure. Um, but I look forward to every lunchtime in summer because I can just walk to my garden, pick up, pick up some beans or something, come in, do a, a stir fry, yeah. use it up with the leftover rice from last night or something. And uh, it, just the you know the the feeling of eating something that you have sown and picked up and eating joy. that moment from from a garden to plate is absolutely amazing and I would I would um, highly recommend our viewers to 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 begin to do that. Uh, bulk bulk cooking is another thing that I've started to do. So. Um, like uh, I made some dal today and I've, I've made a little bit extra and I will uh, freeze a couple of uh, batches of that. And then when I go over the weekend to my daughter's, I can take one of the batches. If some days I'm traveling and I'm really busy with work and I haven't got time to cook, uh, that comes in handy. But uh, batch cooking is um, something that reduces waste. It also reduces the energy that you are using. Uh, so that, that's something else that um, I have uh, started to do. Uh, meal, meal planning is something that's also very important. So uh, when I work with my clients with time management, for example, or uh, living healthily, uh, if, you, if you look at what's left over in the fridge on, a, on your shopping day, then um, make your meal plan for the rest of the week make a shopping list and when you go shopping stick to your shopping list and don't get uh, tempted by the two for one or the unhealthy things that are on on special offer because chances are that you you might waste that food again some of it might be unhealthy so when you plan a healthy menu for the week and you've got all the things in your 
fridge or handy in your kitchen, you are more, you are less likely to waste the food. You're more likely to eat healthily. And because you have um, uh, freshly cooked that food, uh, you have not got uh, prepackaged food, which is full of chemicals and uh, processed food uh, is stripped of all the, new, new, some of the nutrients. It has chemicals and E numbers and all that added. So when you, when you aim to plan what you're gonna cook and you're gonna cook it at home and you are shopping in a way where you're not going to waste that food, uh, you are, it has multiple benefits. So you are saving money, you are eating healthily, you are helping the planet and living sustainably because you are reducing the waste. Uh, and also the, um, I mean, I'm not, um, an expert cook like you and Seema, Kiran, uh, and I cook very basic stuff, but homemade food is much better than processed food, you know? So even if you're not a good cook, just make very simple things, you know, just rustle up some rice and uh, some brown rice or some black rice and some vegetables with it. Uh, the kind of recipe that Alisha uh, taught us today, those things are really, really simple. So aim to, cook yourself instead of buying prepackaged food and, and ready-made food. So, so when I try to live that, uh, something I've started to do is I've started to make my own yogurt. Now this is, um, making your own yogurt is really, really easy. You just boil the milk, put a little bit of culture and you leave it in a warm place. And if, if I'm saving one a pot, plastic pot um, a week, then when you add that up uh, at the end of the year, I'm saving 52 plastic pots. Uh, and also my yogurt has got less sugar, less salt than the ready-made one. Uh, it's much healthier. It keeps longer in the fridge because it hasn't got any chemicals. So the more you aim to buy ready-made stuff and the more you aim to make your own stuff. So you can make things like, uh, your own yogurt, as I've said, you can make uh, snacks for children like cookies instead of um, buying plastic laden, sugar laden, chemical laden, um, artificial color laden snacks. Uh, just make some cookies. This can be like a nice um, uh, game with the children as well. It can be like a nice activity as well. So you can make um, things like healthy flapjacks, you can make uh, cookies, you can make uh, things with uh, nuts and dates, you know, you kind of uh, blend them and you can make them into little shapes. Uh, and all these make really healthy snacks. Uh, instead of buying the, the ready, you know, plus the, the packets of crisps and packets of um, uh, snacks for children, because they, again, they are saving on the plastic. We are reducing sugar and salt for the children. We are cutting down on the E numbers and the chemicals that children are taking in. So you can try making things like um, pickles, um, chutneys, uh, yogurt, snacks, um, even things like um, you know the Indian savories like chevro or gatia and things like that. Because again, they came in. They come in plastic laden um, packets. Um, so, so all, all these things make a big difference. Uh, they, they save you lots of money. They, uh, are much healthier. Uh, you are passing, you are being a good, um, role model for your children, uh, and passing on good habits to your children. You are also uh, saving, you are contributing towards your well-being, and you're also contributing towards a sustainable planet. Ansa, that was very exciting and so useful from a consumer level point of view. Stay around, don't go, because shortly in about 40 minutes, we are going to have open session where after Mala finishes, Kiran will drop you back in because you from a house person and an expert to Mala from the food industry to Kiran will be able to bring in uh, tips that people in the kitchen can use. But stay around because Alicia, who is about to sign off, 
we want to bring Alicia back before she signs off. So Alicia, if you can put your uh, the video on. Seema, you and Kiran mentioned about this young lady who is the resident demonstrator for Healing Our Earth. At this young age, she has opened up a beautiful retreat in India, in Kasoli. But that is not just for yoga, meditation, but also healthy living and healthy food. So Alicia, tell us more about it uh, to our viewers before you sign off, because again, next year we plan a retreat over there. Then Kiran will drop in Mala for an alternative talks, which will be very useful for food safety, food loss, food waste, etc. Seema make a knot and Kiran, Hansa has already offered her brother's contact to her, who is already involved in school in Kenya in a project, education project. So, you know, our momentum has already gained. We have got, in fact, we've got also two people offline who has contacted us. So let's get Project Africa going, where we take UK and Mala will organize that with the local council, that not just for our indigenous and the ethnic UK population, but the corporate social responsibility of United Kingdom to Africa. So we are going to merge that in. So Hansa, Seema will be in touch with you. Kiran is already in touch with you from uh, other points. Seema, you and Kiran, so we are very specific. You lead the Project Africa. Mala will input through the local councils over here. We have a Mita Josie with also a healing team at the back, you know, who is going to see if she can take a part through a conference which is going to take place in Africa. So, you know, the, the, just, just our listeners listening are excited about it. So now let's go to Alicia. We want to know more about Kasoli and the wonderful recipes she does there, but also yoga and meditation. Then over to you, Kiran and Seema. Alicia, it's all yours with uh, Seema, over. Hi, um, sorry, I, uh, I'll, I'll hop in quickly and um, I, I can tell you a little bit more about uh, the retreat. Uh, and then I'll hand over back to to you. Um, so I I kind of touched on the retreat earlier, and you know wanting to offer wellness programs. So um, if uh, so, what we do typically over there is uh, we get a group of people up and uh, we host them in our home. It's a very intimate setting. It's um, small groups is what we do. Uh, because we want to keep the programs very personalized. And then what we do is we offer wellness uh, in, in the form of a program, whether that's through a yin and yang balancing uh, retreat for three days, or whether that's a full stress relief and rejuvenation, a five-day mind-body-soul detox, or whether that's a longer, more specific 10-day uh, you know, weight management program. Uh, so those those are the kind of options that we have, and uh, those um, and we have amazing facilitators and amazing people we work with to run these programs. So I'm so excited to be able to be able to share that with everybody, and hopefully we can have a retreat there soon, and um, maybe even do something with healing our earth um, at the retreat. That would be wonderful. Oh, so, Alicia, my dream is way bigger than that, darling. My dream for you is to connect you with all of the coaches that we know uh, who are, you know, planning and who have programs and um, and then just to bring them to your site. You know, we want to grow. That would be lovely. Thank so, you. Well, first, the, the groundwork is just connecting with um, all of these people. Yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely. It's absolutely. good to bring that community together. Yeah. And we have big dreams for you, girl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Risha, if you could uh, share some photographs with us later at some point of your retreat, of which you shared yes, with me course. when we were in Delhi. I mean, they were they're beautiful. And uh, I think, you know, every every journey starts with a seed, planting a seed. And then once we have that seed, then we wait for that seed to germinate, sprout, we water it and it grows. You know, yeah. and and you have planted this beautiful seed, and it's been watered, and it's been it's growing. And I know uh, the place is beautiful. I know your mom and you and your family has taken put a lot of love and effort into that 
house in Kasoli, yeah. like you mentioned, it's your grandfather who gave it the name Wing 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 Song. You know what a beautiful I love that name. name. I love it, and I wish I love you it. I, all I think the best. I think it's time to write an article on um, Alicia. Don't you think, Sima? Oh I mean, yes, it is very much. Yeah, me too. A yeah. time to, I think to write Kieran, an article on how Kieran, everything she's doing. Yes. Kieran, 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 you are the best person because you exquisitely write yeah. articles. But let's see if we can do a talking article as well. So within the article, if we can do a bit of reels as well, where it's talking. Because Seema, you know, you were in Delhi. Light landing from Delhi, which would be a main international airport. The drive from Delhi to Kasholi is also exciting. So from Delhi, the excitement can start. And, and Alicia has got all that planned too as well, that you can be welcome from the airport right to the destination in the process of traveling you start enjoying and then she has done a hands-on planning of the retreats it can be three day five days seven day and the sunset and the sunrises the pictures yeah. she shared with us are simply scintillating that's yeah. what i that's what i lots, lots of things. maybe even you know because we can own, we're only allowed so much space on substack and so many pictures uh, I'll have to look into videos, but it can be part one, part two, part three, just like I did for my uh, uh, okay. time and fashion. You're thing. so kind. Thank you. Any, I mean, the, as you wish. <laughs> it's your oh, definitely. We will liaise and we'll, you know, explore ideas together and we'll put it into action. You know, and 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 you know, Alicia, uh, I want to say you make us all very proud. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, at such a young age and you know how you just lifted yourself out of the UK went back home to Delhi and in a matter of no time you started this very short span of time you know yeah. I think it took a while, three months or but... four months of moving back you started yeah uh, I think I'm going to connect you with my daughter as well you know the the that generation so interesting I was I was listening to what you were saying about the work that she does so interesting yeah I would love to need to connect, to connect with these people. Mara your work is amazing and you've done so much in in uh in I'd say so little time <laughs> you know I'm listening to all of you and we all connect and Alicia I wish I had met her when she was here I would have got into the projects as well oh. and uh just just uh, uh, Hansa, I mean, you're doing all the right things, I want to say. I was going to bring that in later on my surplus food talk. And you just nailed it. You just hit the right buttons. And that was an education. And I must say, well done. Uh, you could be a change maker as well, uh, leading families and your community. He is. He is a change maker. And you should follow her on Plant Bite on Instagram. She's, she's very... You know what I love about you, Anisha, is you, you take yourself out of the box. Hmm. You know what I mean? You take yeah. yourself out of that comfort zone and you, you're not scared to explore and you're not, you're not, uh, you're daring when it comes to food and recipes. She's, she's and purposeful. She's very purposeful. purposeful. That's the word. Purposeful. Very purposeful. Very purposeful. Thank yeah. you. But I, everything that we've spoken about here and we constantly talk about on Healing Our Earth, I've tried to implement everything into um, the, the retreat because if even if we can be sustainable, more sustainable, and if we can buy locally and grow our own food and do all these things and, and, and build communities and, and give back to the farmers over there. I mean, everything we've just talked about over here. Uh, you know, we can talk about it, but if we don't put it into action, then it's just What's an idea, you know. So I want to thank you, ladies, as well, for giving me that inspiration and to listen to it and, um, you know, and and to have all of you on you. And and I've learned so much just listening to, uh, you know, Hansa and Mala as well today. And I'll be uh, keeping that with me moving forward as well. Sure. And I'm going to forward you the notes on on um, uh, Seema and my delivery for later today. You know, I know you have to go. I'm mindful of that. So I'll yes. forward it to you. Yeah. And Thank uh, you. beautiful dish, yummy dish. I'm going to try it out. <laughs> Please do I'll share try. pictures. I will. I will. I'll share <laughs> pictures with the black rice. And we wish you all the best, Alicia. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Global Namaste to everybody. Thank you for having me on. Such a privilege. Global Namaste. Mala.
Back to you. Oh, exciting things, huh? Thank you for your patience. And sorry, we had to go back and forth. We're just trying to accommodate all our lovely people. You know, we have so many wonderful things to contribute here. And, and you know what I like about it? Because I can see the connection. Um, all the things I'm doing, and that's what people are already doing. And we need to make this platform greater and go out there. Like Neil said, let's use this. And I've trialed it out in, 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 in my borough. And now everyone else is doing it in their homes. And exactly what Hansa was talking about, using the basic ingredients and bulk food. We're going through this uh, crisis, living uh, uh, crisis at the moment with the shortage of food and all kinds of issues, energy. And I say, uh, that's what I should do on the cooking. Get families to bulk up the food with nutrition. That nutrition is the most important thing. And you don't need to have expensive ingredients, pulses, just, just expand it and use vegetables that give children energy and, and enough greens in it, but also make it interesting, exciting, color, flavor, and get them involved in that cooking. And yeah. it's education. Education starts from their home. Right. And, and I've tried it with people that, they had literacy levels or they came from various cultures and they couldn't understand how to speak English, but it's identifying colors, shapes, and getting them involved in it. And then we, we transferred our, our skills and we shared and exchanged. And, you know, as the, we call ourselves food ambassadors and food champions. And sometimes they are food champions within people that are socially excluded from society for whatever reason. And I uh, just beautiful things came out of it. And uh, so that's why I want to say it's be giving people, if we can do it on a local level, why not go bigger? Like Neil said, you know, take it to another level uh, to Africa. And I think we all have that power to do that, share and exchange and help projects, uh, you know, become sustainable. And uh, yes, there's lots more to share. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about food safety. And uh, I think, as we all know, when we're looking at online cooking shows, et cetera, it's always about what's going on in the background. Uh, and uh, I think food safety is about handling, storing and preparing food to prevent infection and help to make sure that our food uh, keeps enough nutrients for us to have a healthy diet. And it also ensure, we must ensure that uh, contaminants that can cause uh, foodborne illnesses are not present in food prep, storage and distribution. So it's very important how we handle food. I always say the golden rule with food is clean as you go. Uh, I don't know if uh, Kieran agrees with me, um, an expert chef, <laughs> I always like to clean as you go. So you make sure you're, you're your workspaces, your environment is clean and free of as much as possible unfriendly bacteria. Uh, when you're working in busy uh, kitchens, or even if you have a family do as well, uh, you could be so busy answering the phone. We're all into our technology. So you, just the fact that you're holding a phone in your hand and you cook and you touch other ingredients or, or equipment, you, it's cross contamination as well, and it's easily done in a very highly pressurized uh, environment as well. So, um, Mala, Mala, do you mind if I just, you know, uh, just chime in here? So, just for the purpose of our viewers, you know, to give it, give them an idea um, on um, cross contamination. You know, you know, it, it exploited a little bit more <laughs> here, you know, and expounded. So, first of all, going back to clean as you go, yes. Every time you see someone cleaning as they go in the kitchen, you know they've been trained from the school of hard knocks. That's for sure. So they've had a good mentor. They've had a good leader training them. And that's when you see that action go into play, you know, clean as you go. And it just comes so automatically and naturally. That's the most hygienic thing. Now let's talk about cross-contamination. Like you said, the holding of the phone or uh, touching all your personal things and and then the next thing. So share a little bit about that. So it's absolutely important. <clears throat> um, before you touch food, 
always wash your hands and wash it thoroughly uh, before cooking. And you have, you'll have to wash hands a few, quite a few times whilst cooking food and preparing food. Even if you touch your hair, your mouth, your nose, during the um, seasonal periods, uh, in summer there's hay fever, you'll be sneezing a lot. Or in winter, you'll have the sniffles and the coughs. You, and while you're cooking, you tend to have that. You, you, you'll just have to constantly wash your hands and make sure you dry that. And also, uh, going to the toilet, there's times when people, uh, you possibly go to the toilet and you'll be wearing um, an apron or your chef's coat. Always remember, if you're in a hurry, make sure you take that off. Uh, during my training sessions, people accidentally did that, or they had babies and they had to quickly go and change the babies. And uh, in my training sessions, I still run, I do some role play, role plays with, with, with the students. And it's quite interesting how sometimes it's easily forgotten when you, you, you're overwhelmed in your head and you're trying to get the food ready and prep and trying to get everything done on time. And it's the basic most fundamental things you can forget easily done so it's always important to ensure um, you wash your hands because as you go along your environment you pick up bacteria bacteria is constantly growing and uh, as much as you can clean your environment you just don't know somebody would have come in um, with some hygiene issues and you could have touched or had cross-contamination or interacted with the person or even the foods, the raw ingredients that you brought uh, from its logistics uh, and transportation, you could have picked up um, any type of bacteria along the way. So it's very important to ensure you wash your hands thoroughly. Um, tie, if you've got long hair when you're cooking, make sure you tie your hair back. If you've got short hair and the front is sort of longish, covering your face, make sure you use an Alice band or any band uh, or grip to grip it back, or you could wear those hair hair nets. Most people don't like wearing them, but I think it's quite useful when you're in a kitchen. And also, uh, I, I discovered when during the cooking period, the people that sweat a lot, and it's not through the steam in the kitchen or the heat and rushing around, but it's their own body. Um, some women are hormonal and they over sweat, or it could be their tension and nerves or pressure. So make sure you always you don't drip on the food try and you know stand away from your and make sure you have anything like your your tissues or to wipe your face just please make sure you don't drip because i've seen that happen as well in cooking session and you're unaware of it you can't see it happening it's just human nature but so, if you're cooking Marla, I'm, I'm not sure if you have some principles at the end of this but um if you do i welcome those but let, let's talk about, okay, so food service, food safety in a professional kitchen, restaurant, it's all well and good because um, the training is provided, qualifications are required, uh, serve safe, and food safety is a requirement. That's all well and good. But just for our viewers today and, and tomorrow, the home chefs, the home cooks, what is your advice to them on, you know, the, the, the essentials of you have to go to the bathroom, come back to the kitchen? How do they remember things like that or to wash their hands again or move their hair out of the face? For those who are cooking at home and saying, well, I'm healthy, you know, I'm cooking at home for my family. What are the things that they should consider? How can we help them identify those? Um, well, safety? this is what they should be considering. I mean, during COVID, that was a very good example of how we sh should, you know, take care. During COVID period, uh, we ensured cross contamination and stay two meters away, and surfaces. Everybody had to wash their hands, and I think that's good guidelines as well to continue with. But it's hard to, you know, it's a massive platform to get families to know how to keep clean. But I think it's keep on raising awareness on platforms like this and our cooking projects as well. When you're in your home, it's how you word it and how you phrase it to them. And sure, you, you, know, you, you wash your hands and uh, you use the right equipment and your cleaning surface should be cleaned up. I think even public health could help with this as well because we have a lot of interaction with families and it's getting that narrative out to them 
and and getting the words out there and saying them in your with, home with the addition so, possibly of uh, pictures as well yeah because pictures exactly. speak volumes you know i'm talking about getting that literacy to those who are not schooled is there something that can be done by i know? think it's in a very interesting point you brought up because no one's ever thought about it or mentioned it in mm -hmm. the home. Mm -hmm. And I think now there is a conversation that we can start. And I would like to take that to public health because we give out a lot of information to families and about cooking and nutrition, but including uh, the health and safety of preparing. Well, we lost Mike. again. Yeah. Good. Am I, hello? Ah, okay. there you are. You're back. You're back. Yeah, I think we could start. A Oops. We, we can't hear you. Gone? You're back. Mala, Mala, you're coming, Mala, you're coming in and out intermittently. Um, if you are connected via laptop or something, do you want to try to connect via phone and see if it's seamless? Because maybe the home bandwidth might be low today. Could be, yeah. Low signal here. Maybe try to connect via phone and I will put Seema and uh, Kiran to summarize so far because there have been beautiful points and we want to bring points in a simple form so people at home can adapt and use them as a team. So Mala, try to connect via phone. Uh, you can still be connected here. I'm going to put you in the gallery. Yeah. Over to you, uh, Seema and uh, Kiran. Thank you. Kiran, I loved your point about the home setting, about the awareness mm. of food hygiene in the home setting. Thank you. Know, you. How to bring that awareness into the home. This is well, something. Seema, I mean, uh, you know, in the, in the restaurant industry or even in healthcare where I worked, we would have pictures, you know, from um, food safety. You have very simple pictures, you know, cross off means no, okay, smile means yes, whatever, in the kitchen and all that for people who speak different languages. Right. But what about right. something from home? I mean, that was a great story, great reminder. She brought about the chef's coat and apron. I mean, I dealt with so many of it. I was like many the police, us. you know, following them around. Oh, right. you came to the bathroom. Are you going to change your coat? You wore your coat, you know, you wore your apron, you know, blah, blah, blah. It was hard, but okay, enough about that because that's reinstated. That's there. That's not our job, okay? I'm not there anymore. That's not my job. Here, today, it's about our viewers, you know, who are at home, you know, cooking from home. I want them to receive this understanding as well. well How do we pass this information to Well, them? like Mala said, on platforms like this, you know, and I think it... it we have to increase awareness, but how to increase that awareness, right? We yeah. take it so much for granted that we're cooking at home. Do we tie our hair? Okay, I do. I put my hair up always and I, I you know, like put it into a... Yeah. I have a muslin cloth that I tie it up with, okay? For sure. But things like washing your hands repeatedly, it is so important. Now, I learned that because I'm from the food oh, business. Mass contamination, like she spoke of, you know, with the school. Yeah, I mean, we haven't oh, even uh, discussed cross contamination. Yes. There are so oh, many so if you use, I mean, this is a vegan vegetarian kitchen, but I'm aware of cross contamination between non veg and vegetarian foods, you know. Uh, raw, non That's what I said. We haven't even raw. touched, we haven't even scratched the surface just here. So much. We haven't even scratched the surface. But does the home cook know this? Are no, but aware? that's where Hansa comes in. Hansa writes exactly. all these beautiful stories about children, children's yes. books and all that, you know, gorgeous pictures, there you are. amazing story. And that's that's the authors like Hansa, where they would come in and say, we could Absolutely. do a little, you know, fun thing. Like, what did I say to you in the beginning of the start of the show? What is my grandson, six-year-old learning in school? to be an uh, eco-hero. Eco-hero, right? absolutely. And you know, yeah, even what I find- People like Hansa, the educators come in on this platform, so to speak. Agreed, completely. You know, something, I have to add this, something as simple now. Again, it's a vegan vegetarian kitchen and I'm divulging from the topic, but I have seen so many homes where there's one chopping board for the vegetables and the non-vegetarian meat. 
Hello. No, it is such a big no-no. It's a, big no -no. It and put it's in a different huge places. no, -no. I, I don't think, and talking about scratching surfaces, I don't think we've even talked about uh, how hot the water needs to be when you're washing your, your cutting boards and things, you know. And how about layering in the fridge? Where to yeah, put your cooking yeah. food? Where I have pictures of those. Where to put labels stuff. and everything. Yeah, There's so thought, but... much that needs to be covered. Ansa, we need you. Your storytelling yeah. and everything. We really need you in that dimension. Ansa is like, oh, oh, where did I get myself in? <laughs> uh, but Nima, it's I already had 10 books in my head and you put <laughs> four books in my head. <laughs> There's... I need more time and I need people to help me. <laughs> Answer to whom much is given, much is expected of. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love this eco he eco hero concept. Yeah. I think I've been I'm thinking gonna think about you since yesterday. My grandchildren. Yes. And encourage them to be eco heroines. I've got four granddaughters. There you oh. go. They can be eco heroines, you know. Love it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to take that to them. I absolutely love that concept, you know. Mm -hmm. I have to say yeah. something. The generation today, I'm sorry to cut you in, is very aware about certain elements, certain aspects, basics of food hygiene. I don't know whether they probably learned it in school. Um, I've got two daughters and I, like you have four, uh, four eco-heroines, and I put them into the kitchen at a very young age. You know, we would bake together, we would make cookies together in Hong Kong, you know, we'd knead the dough together. And of course, the awareness was always there to wash your hands before, to dye your hair. You know, Radhika's got long hair, so she always ties her hair up. And they're pretty good cooks, you know, one's 19 and one's 22, and I'm very proud of them. They're in university and they're doing their own stuff. And a lot of it attributes back to my childhood when I grew up in Kenya, and uh, the food culture in Kenya is very, very strong. At breakfast, you start thinking what to make for lunch. and lunch, you start making, thinking what to make for tea. And at tea, you start thinking what to make for dinner. Basically, that. And at dinner, you start thinking what you're going to make the next day. That's how strong the food culture is in Kenya. And my mom encouraged all of us to be in the kitchen at a very young age because she was from the food business herself. And my dad used to tell her, and I'll say this in Punjabi, Randy, but <laughs> Leave them, their children, cook on career. What is it? Why are you troubling the children? And she would turn around to my dad and say, She would say, My dad's name was Hare Christian, so she would call him HK. She would say, HK. And I'll say this in English. She'd say, Mano pata, huh? I know, okay? It's very important that the girls should study. I know you're a doctor and you want the girls to be educated and have a career. It's very important, and I agree with that. But what are they going to feed their husbands? Their yeah. books, you know, and my dad would just stay quiet and he'd say, oh, oh, I can't win with your mother kind of thing. And that same thing has gone down with me and my sister who has two girls as well. But I feel the food hygiene element that I'm bringing in here, it is also passed out from mother to daughter, yes. But more so now, I don't know if it's with the IB degree or what it is, you know, the IB curriculum or what what's happening in school. Children are very aware, like Gayatri, she knows exactly where to store her food in the fridge. She knows everything about chopping boards, you know, Radhika's the same. They're a lot more aware. So there's a gap somewhere in the generations that has lost this wealth of wisdom. We have to reach... Seema, don't forget the boys, because it's not just the girls. Boys too. Sorry, uh, I speak... Uh, uh, in all all, of, all children, yeah. you have to involve them in the kitchen from a very young age. I have daughters, so I speak of daughters. Yeah. Because, but they're and boys, they're girls. Again, if you make it into a play thing, you know, so if you're making chapatis, you give some atta and flour to your little, you know, grandson and get him to make the dough and roll the chapatis and make it like a, a game. You know, I've got a son and a daughter and I did this, I did exactly the same with my son and my daughter. I, I tell you a really beautiful story because when I used to encourage my son to be in the kitchen and we had a rule that we were a team in the house and my son, my daughter, everyone had to contribute to how the house ran, including the cooking and the cleaning. 
And on a Saturday morning, my son's friends used to come and my son had to do, you know, his bit of cleaning and his bit of cooking. And um, they used to think that I was a very um, strict mom. And they said, oh, my mom does everything for me and your mom makes you do these things. But the beautiful thing about this was when he went to university, none of his friends could cook and they relied on my son to do all the cooking. <laughs> And my son's actually turned out to be a wonderful cook, you know, but it's because I never made that distinction. And as a family, you have to work as a team. Everybody does the cooking, cleaning, everything, including the boys and the men in the house. And, you know, um, and it's the same with the concept of sustainability, safety, all those things we are talking about today. Uh, we have the education starts in the home and we have. The, the easiest way to get our children and grandchildren to do something is to do it ourselves and, and to set that example and be a role model. And when they watch you doing it, they will automatically do it. And if you turn it into like a play, as soon as they're able to engage in that kind of play, you begin to engage them and don't worry if they make a mess or whatever they do. Um, it's developing those skills at a very early age and and uh, uh, getting them to be curious about the normal day-to-day -day things like cooking and cleaning, including sustainability, you know, getting them to take an interest in nature, getting them into the garden, getting them to grow their own vegetables and sow the seeds themselves and water the plants and, uh, you know, watch the animals and the birds in the garden. And, and it's it's getting them to to en engaging them at an as early age as possible and you know you being the role model and you setting the example for that what about the mother who hasn't had access to that awareness or wisdom that's my question what about her yeah because, um, I mean her, I'm, I'm sure my grandmother didn't know half as much about food hygiene and food wisdom as my mother did. My mother educated herself because she was in a foreign country. She was in the food business. There were certain rules and regulations. She ran a business, she wrote a cookbook. What about the lady who, or the man for that example, the mother or the father in all fairness, who doesn't have access to that wisdom? How do we reach them? How do we educate them? Kiran, this is my <laughs> point. It's a big question I have. None it of us are perfect. It's a seva company, doesn't it? It's a seva, yeah. It's seva. A, it's a seva that's a, Could I, yeah, I mean, interject. this world is huge and mm -hmm. we have a huge topic and it's going to take years to put the education of what we're talking about out there okay. and for people to be interested in blah, blah, blah. But going back to what Hansa was saying about the children, um, I made a note. If they are paying attention, they will remember. Mm. And what I mean by that is, it's kind of like a memory thing. How do you remember things? Well, if somebody introduces me to Hansa and I'm paying attention to your name, I can then for sure remember it, depending on where I put it in my mind and how I associate your name with what group, I will remember it. But if I'm not paying attention and somebody introduces me you, to, you, to, to you at an event and I'm not paying my eyes a wondering, I'm never going to remember your name. Mm -hmm. So it's same with the children, how you put it out there, like going back to the refrigerator, the, the bad stuff goes down, and then the better stuff goes up and up and up and up, right? That stacking. It's a picture. It's a picture. It's in your memory, you know, the bad and then the better and better. And that's how it sticks. And that's how we communicate, whether we're children or the elderly. We haven't even touched on the, the elderly care, dementia, and all of that stuff. The care of them when it comes to food safety and hygiene and sustainability. How about them? When we put our fingers that and take so care of these people. Here. How do, it's huge. It's huge. It's going that to take so years. Big. And I say that to whoever approaches me on this subject. It's going to take years. It'll be after my time, not during my time. <laughs> you know. I, I, Kieran, I think 
I think, you know, we touch so much, it's broader. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I prototyped these, listening to all of you and, and, and the families and the backgrounds and they're, they were deprived, et cetera. So these are the people I worked with that had no tools or access to all of this. And we engaged. Mm-hmm. Now, now that we have all these multiple tech, uh, digital platforms, right. we can and start. I think we need to raise this with public health as well and say, right. You've missed a trick here. You that's where it. you come in, lady. You know, yes. that's your job. That's yes. why you're here right now, you know. <laughs> and and, uh, and I think we need to bring this to them and say, right, we yeah. can reach these platforms. And you've missed something here about food hygiene. Uh, yeah, and, I, and I'm grateful <laughs> that Neil can have this recording and it will be uh, transported to us afterwards so that we can... Um, save it and make notes and share and all of that stuff because the memory is not going to help us you know so um and then write it down journal it's a new year and put it in mind when i have time i'm going to engage in this when i have time i'm going to connect with this when i have time i'm going to put this forward because if we don't start thinking like this then it's it's not going to happen i mean and, i don't you know project is not going to happen. I mean, what we just discussed will not happen if we don't actively pursue what we are talking about. Sorry, Neil, go ahead. Kiran, you mentioned about the recording. So we are actually broadcasting live on several partner channels on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and a website. We are live already. And the moment the session is closed, the original links becomes recordings. As you say, a recording can be fast forward, stop and re-listen to. And in a simple format, one of the things that I want to lead you to ladies right now, if you can tell the viewers just temporarily and each one of you can put your hand up, two things. Number four, there are four types of food contamination. There are several, but from a health and hygiene at the top level, these are identified as the four types, physical, biological, chemical, and allergenic. From there, we break into five types of common ways the food can be contaminated. One of them, as you will all agree, is temperature abuse. If not cooked correctly, you will have problem. Or if you don't, because your gut and your stomach can handle it, you are okay, but at some point during some age, you will be. The next one we just discussed is a cross-contamination. In 2016, we put it to the government and the electronic company who makes refrigerators as well to put a health warning like a cigarette box into the opening door. They refuse because they say it will just cause panic. We don't agree with them. So once it is rejected, it's only after five years you can resubmit. And I can challenge you that pretty soon, meaning in our lifetime, there will be a warning in the fridge and freezers because that's the only way you can educate people. We move on to the next one, which is the unsafe ingredients. Sometimes we use ingredients that are not safe. We need to read, if we buy from outside, what the ingredients are, you can be allergic to it, you can be having reaction to it. We move to the next one and we discuss that improper storage conditions. If you don't store food correctly, you have a good chance of having it contaminated. And finally, something that you might you guys may not be involved with is the shipping damage. So if a food was manufactured in a country, A shipped what they think was safely to country B, whether it's via air or sea. Then from there, it goes to the depot of the buyer. From there, it goes to the supermarket. From there, it goes to the supermarket storage and supervisor. From there, it is put on a trolley and taken to the freezing department where they restore it again so the consumer can open the fridge. And the guy has forgotten and his call came and that food has been sitting for more than two hours almost semi thawed but he has put it back in. So at the time when you pick it up, it was solid frozen. You have a good chance of catching some sort of ailment from them. Now, these are the, these are professionally identified uh, situation. And all of you have touched some point here. Now, how do we get to the consumer level 
where the housewife, who is very good because she doesn't know E. coli, she doesn't know salmonella, and she doesn't know listeria when she looks at the food. But when she touches the rice and she thinks, ah, this is very sticky, I might as well throw, or she sees the sour milk going uh, off and she can smell that the milk has gone off, you throw away, but they don't have that litmus paper to test it. So I put it back to you now, slightly complicated. Give me the tips at the heart, not to me, to the people who are not from the food industry, where they can simply understand and know fast how they can make a safer food environment. Over to you, ladies. Thank you, women empowerment. Here we go. <laughs> Great contribution. Yeah, so we, we will be touching on those. I have um, markers on all of those notes. And it would be, I mean, it, you can Google all of this information. You will get what you need, even about cross-contamination. You, um, We can put the whole food safety journal, you know, on healing our earth and people can glean from that. There are so many simple ways, but you have to uh, be able to arouse the interest of the viewers. Those who want to learn are interested, care enough, themselves, their family, their planets, instead of handing it out on a platter when, with, and then you don't know if it's going to be consumed or not, the information I mean. So it has to be, we can do all of this. We can put it out there. Do they want it? Do they want to receive it? So that is up to the end user here. Um, much to do, you know, going back to much to do, you know. Um, I want to put Mala back on to finish. She has been so patient and we let her jump on that. Thank you. Yes, there's a lot of work to do. I don't think it's difficult uh, because coming from my experience on this, it has been done. But like I've said, going back to public health, where they impose quite a lot on the public or uh, on people, but I think there's a gap and they've left something out there. Now, uh, we, I think there's work to be done and I'm happy to start uh, with this type of work. Um, in terms of story, think, just sorry, sorry, Mala. I think, like, in terms of what uh, you know, Neil was saying, reference point to the five. You can't, you know, bring this issues up. Uh, you, they, they can't reemerge until the five-year gap. I think that we have the whole um, uh, pandemic behind us to say, no, now's the time. No, we we can't. Mm -hmm. Should be able to bring certain things up. You know, we can't flood the the place with everything. But sure, I think there would be more leeway. Leeway, would you agree? Absolutely, because um, the pandemic did help us to 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 um, identify to adhere to rules that were imposed on us, and those were good rules as well. But it's it's keeping that culture and developing a habit, make it a habit, habit. You know, in the yeah. home. So, and it's not difficult. Uh, it's like breastfeeding, you know, there's rules when you have the breastfeeding nurses, for example, they're going, they nurture these families and they educate them just like that. We can we can use uh, food hygiene in the home um, as an example and, and use the tools that are available. It's there. We just need. And you made a good point whether people would want this education is important. You can give them all the tools. Are they going to use it? Yeah, and, and that's the thing, you know, we can do some research and provide resources and provide links, whatever. Um, I'm sure many, many, many uh, people have contributed to their, uh, to all of that and all the information is available. And, um, but, it, but then it's up to the people, you know, do you want to use because the tools and resources are out there. I 100% I vouch for that, you know, that... And uh, it is there information is available you know. but also i think we need to get schools involved uh it's always nipping it in the bud and getting schools involved in their curriculum to add this to to you know uh, guidance and right living or whatever you know um, other subjects i have to help uh, people about yeah now school, right school, yes, school is a good point but it's but but it all depends it's a, is it a government school is it a private school and then schools with the, the pays for the teachers, with the curriculum, the tight curricu uh, curriculum and scheduling are always gonna defer back to the parents. You know, uh, Would you like to be involved? Uh, maybe the PTA can do something like that and blah, blah, blah. 
it will always come back to the parents. So are the parents willing? Do they have the time to do this now? I, th I think actually they will. Um, from my experience, uh, it was hard for them in the beginning. And when I trialed it into the prototype, they were very concerned about their children and their hygiene and cross-contamination on a smaller scale, you know, on a borrower level, I did it. And it did work. And I believe using the basic tools and making it simple, simplifying it is the best method. And I think we, we, we could do this. And once they see this message all the time, just like COVID, um, you create that education. It becomes it a becomes, lifestyle thing, doesn't it? Once it becomes you sending, your lifestyle. Just, it becomes lifestyle if you keep Absolutely. sending the message out there, right? Yes. And then, it, and then and once it's very graphic, if you see it all the time, see, do it, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, they will. It's creating that culture and, that, and a thought process as well. Maybe but even uh, through social I media, think. nonstop feeding through media for the young ones because that's what they respond to, right? Immediately on their phones, action, react, and get them involved in lessons. So, I, yeah, there's great possibility um, it'll make a positive impact. And I don't think it would take too long. It's just getting uh, the statutory groups to get involved and lead on it as well. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for that. And like Hansa spoke, you know what Hansa said about uh, making it a game for your children. Now I'm talking about very young children. Yeah. You, and this is uh, something I did with my girls. Do uh, you remember the song, This is the Way We Wash Our Hands? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, big one, Seema. That's a good one. You know, little things like that. That's the way, yeah. that's the way, we, the the way we comb our morning. hair, we uh, brush our hair like that. Yes. Uh, Yes, yeah. I mean, all of us brush our teeth, comb our hair. Ansa, do you remember that one? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's that's the way. I mean, I did it with my girls. You know, this is the way you wash your hands. And then, if they're paying attention, they will remember. And they will because it's fun because you've made it a game. You see, yeah. anything. Uh, if you see the education we went through in school, when I was in nursery school, we sat behind desks. Mm -hmm. in Kenya okay and when my children went mm -hmm. to nursery school mm -hmm. or kindergarten as we call it I was sitting on the floor with them for the first two days and the teacher would say let's play you know they would have circle time they would warm up they would sing a lovely song together you know they would sing Incy Wincy Spider they would say hello to everyone or some nursery rhyme or the other, and they would sit in a circle and the teachers wouldn't say, okay, this is your lesson today, A is for Apple, these are your phonetics, ah, ah, blah, blah. But they would make it a game. And that's where it becomes fun. And when it becomes fun, there's an impression in the child's mind and it stays there. Good that's point. What we need to do. Good point. I don't know how advanced our thinking is, in comparison to what the younger generation is learning, perhaps, I'm just gonna put it out there, perhaps if we connect with teachers who have masters in early childhood development, would that help? 100%, because they would know how to approach the mind of a child. And ladies, your thoughts, Mala and Hansa, on this point, on this question? Well, I think they do. I mean, that's where it starts, and they could lead on this as well, because you need these academics to start writing, to including it. Um, there's a lot that's left out, uh, and I think now discovering all of these uh, needs, I think time's running out. And we need to work fast on this as well. I, I, I am hoping and praying that somebody is watching this out there and they're listening or will be listening to the recording due to time zone. And I is going to take up on this lead and, and listen to our prayers, so to speak, you know. Well, I, I just thought about something. A lot of the times we, we don't realize uh, cross-contamination in the home. Mm -hmm. and and illnesses uh i know during the, <clears throat> the the winter periods and things people get sick and and that hygiene comes in there uh during those colder months uh 
this is education for all of us. And I'm just thinking about it now. I just realized when I go around the children's centers and nurseries, I always come back either ill or I pick up something. And uh, families need the education and they want this and they don't understand it because they're too busy buzzing around with their children and families, trying to feed them and, you know, lead, the, yeah. lead their daily routines. And I don't think they actually know or stop for a minute to think, oh, okay, it's the way I'm cooking, um, the way I'm handling food, or I've just probably passed on something or transferred it from somewhere else. So there you go. This is a conversation. Uh, so, yes, we need to get the academics. Yeah, I, I think Sima has, has something to offer here. Sima? Say something. As families are busy, agreed. But how many mothers or fathers will hold back from helping their children with their academic homework? Mm. Not many. Mm. They will sit there and explain their mathematics or the ABCDs to them. I think there's no compromise here. Mm. The same way you would take out the time to do this for your children's academic, like this should be part of the curriculum. It is essential for your overall well-being. There is no compromise. When COVID happened, the children were educated on wearing a mask. They were educated on applying sanitizer to the hands. It may have been a game in school that we're putting the sanitizer in my hands is so clean, oh, I'm shiny, whatever. But there is no compromise. It has to be installed into the system. Like you said, there is no time. And we cannot afford to compromise on this. Mala, you very rightly said about illnesses in winter, a lot of it could be related to food hygiene. The water is cold. You don't want to wash your hands. Children in schools, I worked in a kindergarten in, in and I worked at the ASF in Hong Kong as a supply teacher with very young children. And we would have bathroom time and we would actually have to go into the bathroom outside the bathroom because the children would go in on their own. When they came out, they had to make sure they washed their hands. Because children will not. They'll just put their hands under water and they'll dry them. You know, you have to really sing a song and get them to use the soap and make those bubbles and blow those bubbles yeah. and make it fun and do it. Mm -hmm. it's, it requires a lot of effort and time, but like I said, parents will not compromise on homework. They will not compromise on maths. They will not compromise on that gymnastics class or that dance class or making, turning their daughter into the next ballerina or singer in the then why not do this if this there's no you have to do it you don't yeah, have a choice yeah. you're going to take your child for football class on a saturday spend 10 mm -hmm. minutes with him or her regarding food hygiene mm -hmm. it's important to have worksheets have diagrams have coloring books whatever but do it mm -hmm. Good points. Lots, lots of good lots, points. It's lots to be done. Me, like, you know. Thinking, I'm thinking all yeah. kinds of things you right know. now. It's it's amazing. Wheels are turning. So, so can I come in here, Seema, Kiran and Mala? We have got a project going on in Mauritius. Professor Ish Sharma is in talk with Mauritius government and started the project from the Ayush Ministry of India where the school are encouraged to provide some sort of land where children can start planting foods and grow their own food and vegetables. And they feel the ownership. And by the time they turn into adult, will farm other children to form the same habit. We can, so please Kiran, Seema and Mala make a note now in mm -hmm. our group that we will create for the school education project, we will yes. involve Professor Is Sharma because he's directly involved to the government going through to the school. We will involve Dr. Rajiv Gupta from Eat Smart, Think Smart, Be Smart, because he's all to do with food. We will go with my original concept where I feel that every project we bring health and food and sustenance and green for the earth should start with children first. Because if we can convince the children and school authority, then we can go to the appropriate media and the parliamentarians. Because this is the way of how the process works. 
And so this again is beautiful. What you ladies have come up with the theme and a discussion. We have now formed a very good uh, a group that we will create, which will bring this project's fruition to the education authority, through to the children as they grow with us from healing our earth. Some of us may be walking with stick and, and having <laughs> a different lifestyle in 30 years from now. But in our lifetime, we, the healing our earth, can be the coin duped for making this happen. So thank you, over to you girls. Thanks, Neil. Thank you. So Neil. what Neil was saying, um, so MCM, Malawi Children's Mission, um, started the program, I think, four years ago, we started growing, you know, tomatoes, maize. Maize is their staple. So we started with maize, so agriculture, planting, all of that stuff, and just helping the children for, to, you know, with that uh, sustainability thing. And that worked really, really well, you know, for them to be able to dig and plant from seedling to fruit and seeing the 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 work of their um, the labor of their hands it those happy smiles that we captured in pictures you know seeing them do this and then we started another program on um you know just craftsmanship you know for the young men you know for the boys so that they can take care of themselves so it's not just hey you provide an education and then you move on and you're on your own in the world you know no, you know, here are your resources, here are the tools, now go act upon it, you know, so all the way through. But the reason I bring it up is because we did start this and it's still going famously and we have pictures, you know. So if anybody wants to know more about that, um, go on to Malawi Children's Mission website and you'll see what the children are doing there. Yeah, a lot of the schools um, are, are are uh, doing or what you just said you know planting trees uh, mm -hmm. it's like they encourage the child like my my daughter had a plant in school and she that was her baby and she had to take responsibility and look after the plants they would go among right. beans and you know all yeah. these little things and you know, yeah. more, and if, if, even the the chefs have programs you know yes Indeed. Where they and bring, you know, uh, like in California, you know, they they have property and they hold classes out in in the in the gardens, you know, and they teach so, them how to plant and, and grow and eat, you know, or right. eat what they grow, you know. That's and that's, Hong Kong space is limited, so they either have something planted in a pot or they use the rooftop of the school, you know, yeah. they just guarded of the children to grow. Sure. And my girls were at Glenili, which you would know is a very good school. Mm -hmm. They had a rooftop garden and children were planting, etc. Mm -hmm. But you know, when we said this, this is okay. A few of the schools that have the budget to do it. Yes, correct. Not every school has that kind of a budget. Right now, they're trying to decide on uh, schools are battling with the general, you know, what to give them at break time, all those soggy. Exactly. Biscuits yes. that are laden with multidextrin and all these horrible ingredients, or you know how to keep the children healthy. So everything needs a huge budget. Yeah, there, there, there are many. There have to be many players in programs like that. You know, exactly. somebody with funding. You know, just like for MCM, somebody's in charge of funding, somebody's in charge of nutrition, somebody's in charge of education. You know, um, and you know, like. Like you said, you know, you're hoping someone out there really hears us right now. And I feel the same way that, you know, I really hope there is someone out there who hears us on this platform that yeah. a lot needs to be done. It needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of committed players. It needs funding. It needs awareness, education. There's so Dedication, much. research, you know, resources. Research, resources, et cetera, everything. Lots of things, yeah. It's okay. And Mala's an expert. Yeah, I wait for her input. You're so patient, Mala. Thank you. No, uh, what I love about it is uh, while you're all talking, I've already got plans in my head and I'm working them out. That's brilliant because we're all on the same page. And I think, well, the, like you were saying, there's a lot of work to be done. And But I think we could shortcut and fast track it because during COVID, 
governments put in very quick plans, you know, they worked super fast uh, to get all the policies, procedures, and, you know, what was needed for COVID or the vaccines as well. And I'm sure we can do this. We're not short of technology anymore or digital platforms. Uh, and they need to identify their way, where they're wasting money and where their lack is in the gaps. And we could bring that in and say, all right, this is where, alongside that procedure or policy on food, add this. It's additional. And it's imperative that they, you know, include it. So, for yeah. instance, we have a lot of uh, information on nutrition. Uh, every council is very busy. Their policies to reduce food waste, food insecurity, but include nutrition. Nutrition is the most fundamental thing right now in a child's life. And they're all tapping into it and trying to tackle it at an early um, age of a child. But we should include that narrative and writings in that additional material that they're giving out. Uh, and find a way, yeah. So I think it's there. We just need to get it to them. My, I can tell you the system is such, this is my observation that, sorry to cut you short, cut you, there's, there's mm -hmm. a lot of awareness being created with children on what you should be eating. Have your fruits, have your berries, have your this, have your that, makes you big and strong, papaya and spinach, mm. blah, 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 blah. And what do they get at break time? White bread and jam. Yeah. Um, and our projects, we created a food policy and it was imposed on us by our funders. And it was not eating white bread, buying a brown bread or cutting down on your sugars and using alternatives. So it's, it, Lambert's very strict on that and they really work fast on it. So we had public health come and check on our projects if I cook or deliver something. And I think there's a lot of laziness around it as well where the people delivering on the front line they need to, to, you know, uh, they need somebody watching over them as well. And you've got to be really strict and passionate about doing this kind of work. Uh, you must mean what you say and you must deliver. So I had a food policy, interesting, I'll quickly bring that up. Um, we called it veg power. And everybody thought like, oh, carrots, onions, you know, the boring old thing. No, it wasn't. It, we focused on vegetable based meals to inspire us to eat more veg generally and to make our community cook uh, they were cooking easier and safer and uh, for example sugar-free we looked at other interesting ideas about sugar-free uh, dessert uh, for example we make up little oat balls with coconut no sugar and i'd use the I'd, the zest of an orange or any a lemon or something to give it flavor it's using your herbs from the garden to flavor your rice uh, it was just different things but reducing the oil content in food for example get children to drink more water than drinking a sugary drinks at 10 o'clock in the morning uh like in in england we have the pound shop so everybody buys these massive uh, sugary drinks for cheap for a pound and what we do is we would take away those sugary drinks and it put lovely healthy like segments of oranges anything with flavor in it into the water jugs and then the children automatically would go out for that. And they knew there's no sugary drinks. So they top up with the water and it's flavored. And we'd use leaves, mint leaves, uh, cucumbers. There's so many alternatives. It's greater. And it worked. Uh, I'm sure if you're living in England, you heard of the Holiday Hunger Project, the half term half project. Uh, it was now endorsed by my, um, Marcus Rushford, the footballer. This project was funded by the GLA. It was originally called the Holiday Hunger Project, where children, did, uh, they could not access food during the holiday periods or half term, or their families couldn't afford to feed them because they were not in school. So we piloted this in uh, Lambeth and other boroughs, and we'd cook uh, food and include vegetables in them and get it out to the children. They rejected it in the beginning, and eventually we got them involved in the cooking process, and then they enjoyed it. Now, I find it a legacy. Uh, on one of my projects uh, or charities, the youngsters, the teenagers are leading on the cooking and they go into the garden and they're bringing all the fresh fruit and vegetables or whatever we seasonal uh, products we have and, and they include that. So it works, it's work, it's hard work, but once you start the groundwork and you get families involved and parents involved and then you're good to go. 
coming back to my policy, the food policy, we've got snacks. Uh, all our snacks are real healthy snacks, such as fruit, uh, cheese, and popcorn. We we we're very creative. We make it make it exciting, and we you know display it to children so they don't need to go and eat like crisps and you know unhealthy snacks. Uh, we also do the waste to nothing. We aim to throw nothing away. We use washable plates and cutlery, and we we get hold of surplus food wherever possible. So even a potato peel or a pumpkin peel, we grill that, and and that's used as dips, and you know, like our croutons. Those are croutons. So you've got to be creative and innovative with food, and get children involved, and and that's what they want. Yeah. How much time do you spend, Mala, at each interval, each project, hands-on? Hands-on, um, maximum four, four to five hours. It's the washing up that's, and everybody disperses with, you know, the end of the day. So if I'm training, uh, I have four hours because you've got to get the children fed by 12 o'clock and it's lunchtime. So I mainly focus on one pot cooking and easy ingredients from the garden. And so I work with surplus food strictly. And uh, so I get what I get. So throw anything at me, a fruit and vegetable, I'll make something out of it. But it's training those families to shop wisely, ethically as well, locally, and within the budget range. And so that is important. How about recycling leftover surplus food that's cooked? Right. So what we do is we've got uh, compost is different compost uh, bins and we've got local gardens and farms and uh, we have volunteers that come in or anyone going on that route they just drop it off as well. But do you ever recycle a cook dish into another dish? <clears throat> yeah we do uh, we recreate the dishes as well sometimes we have over surplus of rice and it's just too much and uh, what we do is we would make stir fries with that and uh, we'd make kitchery as well. Everybody loves, got used to kitchery in London. And then as an accompaniment, we'd make other rice ball, rice cakes, and um, we'd add vegetables like peas and things in there to bulk it up as well, and then uh, grill them. Um, yeah, this just be very creative. So we don't waste anything. Even a potato peel gets washed up and we grill that and that's croutons. And we give them out as snacks as well. So time consuming is four hours, but it's possible if you have enough people, if you plan yourself, you've got to plan and work within your means and your time and don't go with, beyond that. You know, if and you green. wash your vegetables and you wash your vegetables, scrub them really well, all the skins can be turned into a stock. Yep. You can make stock with it. You can Delicious. even freeze them. Absolutely. And Delicious. in bulk, the food job. it's really yummy. Comes out really well. A slow simmer. It comes out. So there's a lot can be can be done on the food a wasted yeah. angle, which you're already doing so much. With. You're doing a lot. And My I, question that, is that commitment is huge. What you're it's doing, huge. It's a huge commitment. It, it's huge, but when you when you deliver it at the end, the satisfaction is the most important thing, and the beauty. The Everybody joy. got fed for free. The joy. The, the joy, the but. Joy. And it's the deliverables that's important and the aim, <clears throat> the objectives are important. That family aid, they were educated, the children took something home and they want to take that vegetable food home as well. So it does work. Yeah. Yeah. How about this look of supermarkets? I mean, the chains that we have at Sainsbury's, Tesco's, uh, Great Girls, Morrison's, whatever. I don't want to name one or two in little, whatever in particular. I'm sure they come into a lot of food waste to a certain extent, an expiration, number one. Yeah. And number two, vegetables that are going to, you know, going to get bad within four days or whatever. Are there any initiatives being presented forward on how to use that, that food more for the needy, for schools, whatever? Because um, it can be done, but it's We not can't get involved done. in that. Those okay. are different policies when it comes to supermarkets okay. and all that. That's not our work, okay. our place. You know, we can't get involved. Okay. They have a thing, and then after COVID, remember all the policies changed. It's changed. not safe. You can't. You've got to right. throw it right. away. Right. They, they have completely different uh, regulations and compliance there. So that's um, not the space. In, in the UK, it's it's it's. Uh, they give a lot of food away now. There's lots of um, 
digital platforms where you could uh, access the food waste. Nice, nice. Uh, I'm very involved with the uh, Sainsbury's nationally, even the Nandas and the KFCs and uh, uh, Whole Foods, uh, Barrow Market. They all have, you could collect their food as long as you sign a food policy with them and you have a food hygiene certificate. They do inspect, they do the due diligence where they inspect your site to see how you're cooking and where you're cooking. And uh, yeah, you're good to go. Uh, Fair Share and uh, the Felix Project are leaders in surplus food logistics. Uh, throughout London, I had 16 Sainsbury stores locally that asked me to collect food. And I just referred them to the big boys because it was a massive logistical job. Mm-hmm. What I do is I do uh, cross uh, connecting where I network charities directly with stores. So yeah, there are policies in place and safety guidelines and things like that. So it's quite safe now to, uh, but it's not good enough. People are still wasting uh, in the supply chain. I mean, there's a difference between food loss and food waste. Mm-hmm. If yeah. I could, there's a slight difference there. I'll tell you why. So food loss most often occurs at the production, post-harvest and processing stages of the food chain. And food waste occurs at the end of that uh, food chain. So food, the food waste is, which is already produced uh, for human consumption. And, uh, but then, you know, it, it, it's just gets dis- uh, discarded or well not consumed by humans. So I think every year in the UK, or oh, sorry, globally, 1.3 billion tons of food is wasted globally. Yeah, the numbers are far higher in the United States, much higher. Yeah. Much higher. higher. So question to you. So dented cans, we are not allowed to accept dented cans when um, the delivery comes in. What category does that fall into? So that's surplus, dented, but <clears throat> I've, yeah, you can use dented cans, but provided it's not, there's, it's not uh, rusty. And there's no air or leakage or, you know, but uh, it's, it's a marketing tool. I mean, uh, you know, uh, supermarkets want to present their products well. They're not going to se- want to sell those dented cans, but they do send them off to charities like the food banks. If a charity would accept that dented can, then that's it. the onus is on them. I accept a lot of dented cans and I take them. And uh, provided it's not right, I always in ch- check, yeah, you've got to check the products and inspect them if it's uh, consumable and safe to cook with. Uh, yeah, depending if it's rusty and if there's air going on and they open, then you obviously dispose it. You don't. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I think I think each each country has this, has different policies in, yeah. in that regard. Yeah. So ladies, can I come in again, please? Let's come sure. to now fruition and actually plan the projects that we bring in. So Mala, you make a knot. I'm going to put you in touch into Midlands with Kirit Mystery, where we will carry out the outreach you are already doing with the councils in London. So it'll be very important. And then Kirit's responsibility is to involve the councils into Midlands. And Ramesh Gupta, who is part of Healing Our Earth, up north of England. So I think we cover the whole country between these three zones. So if you could do a simple paper on something that when we put them on a group, I'm planning to put everybody on a group master WhatsApp group where we will brainstorm. Kiran, you already have a mini blueprint for the Africa project where other countries can adapt that to a different style that suits with their local ministry. So that work, Kiran, that you have done and which has been there for years. So now we've also got sustainability report on it, the progress on it, and a testimony for it. Let's expand on it very fast and positively. Mala, concurrently, whilst you talk with the local councils, also encourage them to give their corporate sociability back to the third world countries. They do have funds. Yeah. And they are okay, and we will lead them to it. So we will communicate between them to our uh, our project leaders in the different country. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, we will bring Professor Is Sharma, who has already started a project to government from Indian Ministry, mm-hmm. Dr. Rajiv Gutta, who has already got 
it's smart, be smart, think smart, whatever it is, will be bringing in there. So this group will now start discussing this very specifically. And Kiran, you will again be very useful that you can create a Healing Our Earth newsletter on this. You always wanted to project and promote Healing Our Earth in a, in a different light. Here it is. And Seema, you can make sure that this coordination takes place. I'm there with you guys all the way. And then let's take it to government level. Because going through to children, enhancing their life, creating less obesity by also training on good food, food sustainability. So Seema, I come back to you here and I request you, since you are the producer for a 26th February uh, episode with IAHV, and in the four hour, can you keep one hour, because this goes with that theme, the food sustainability as well, and environment, which is, which is part of your event on that day. Maybe if you can allocate one hour to all this dynamic team, and then you can uh, chat offline to Kiran as well and Mala, then that will be so fruitful with together with Shailene, what he's planning to bring, you what you're planning to produce, and one hour on this, where we actually report the advancement of the project. Now, Karen, we can let's set go up around, chat, Karen. Sima, let's go around, around the screen here for one minute, because I've also got an announcement with Dr. Lakshmi, because she was there in uh, Vatican just this weekend. So we want to announce that, and our Dr. Soda won the award for chiropractic. So I want to do that. And then we'll, we, it's okay if we are running 10, 15 minutes late. We want to come back. Mala, you are going to be a very useful instrument because you are current, you are in with the councils because the project that we want to do in the United Kingdom is already taking place and you have got direct input in it. So I'll talk to you offline again and we'll just expand that. Seema, Kiran are already part of that group who is in chat with you. So can you just update them? Send everything that you've sent me to them too as well. So they're completely up to date. So we want to now, at Healing Our Earth, the new fashion is now to start bringing project to the end users or person to person or conferences or to the councils or schools. Co schools we are very keen with because if we can get into the curriculum, it may be this year, next year, year after, then we are in a full autonomy of it. So McDonald's are very clever. When they do their advertisement, they hit the children because children then pester the parents and the grandparents. And so why not? McDonald's wants to give toys to the children. And it's quite rightly so. Although if we can guide them to do slightly better healthy food by putting gentle pressure, because they're too big for us to put pressure. And Mala, again, you are actually involved with the few names that we have mentioned. We will not re-mention them. So see how we can take care of it. And then we bring the parliamentarians of UK people, Italy who are with us, Germany who are with us in our other group, okay, the integrated health group. Maybe it may be the right time, Seema, to involve Kiran Mala in that group. But I want to keep it separate because this will be the working group rather than a general group to exchange. And also in comes here, the women empowerment. That's what Dr. Lakshmi did this, this weekend. I'm just going to bring a screen up. So while you three are preparing any points that we want to discuss on this point, so we come to fruition of projects, which we bring it into running as outreach, I just want to say and welcome Dr. Lakshmi. Say hello to our patron here, who is the president of Hindu Forum of Europe, goes around Europe promoting healing our earth and, 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 and is always supportive. Dr. Lakshmi, you met the Pope at the Vatican. Uh, yes. And um, here is the picture. Let me share the picture first. And it's, it's with pride that we say that, look, our own Dr. Lakshmi was there. And this, this was partly, partly to do with, uh, with a journey that the men and the women that should undertake together. And it was also participating in a dialogue of life, action, theological, spiritual, I think as well, through friendship. And what it was, it was all the women from all over the world with influence 
they gathered to celebrate the women empowerment. And the beautiful part was our uh, Dr. Lakshmi got to have some sort of influence. So tell us more about it, Dr. Lakshmi. Thank you, Neil Ji, for uh, introducing me to, into this. Uh, well, this was uh, was plan planned since uh, the, we were planning this for the last um, eight months or so, and it got materialized last week. So I was uh, in Rome for, I went on Monday and I returned uh, last night. And um, um, it was a hectic trip. Um, we were not put up in very great hotels or anything like that, but it was a very simple um, uh, place in the Vatican City. It was like a hostel. And of course the rooms were very nice, clean, neat, um, you know, very, very purely white, everything. And the food also that they, uh, they gave us was very sattvic food. And uh, let me put it in, in, uh, in uh, you know, Indian words. It was sattvic, very, very vegetarian and uh, just, uh, you know, freshly cooked food were given to us. And uh, there were uh, women from all over the world you know, uh, you may it, it is Japan, be it um, uh, China, then there is uh, Indonesia, uh, then, uh, you know, the MENA region country, the Middle East and the uh, South African countries, all those women, and of course, uh, the European women, the UK women, and a few from, very few came from U United States. But it was, uh, and I mean, listening to each and every woman about their country and uh, their work was fantastic. Especially, I, ha I had a soft corner for the MENA region uh, women. That is, um, uh, MENA region is Middle East and uh, South Africa. These, these were the regions. And, you know, they have struggled and struggled so much to, you know, to reach this level and to come to a meeting and talk about what they did in their countries. So it was um, very, very uh, um, informative, uh, heartbreaking. At the same time, uh, you know, we've uh, formed a WhatsApp group now, so we will be communicating with each other and uh, we will uh, try to, you know, in, in, uh, raise the morale of all these women coming from different parts of the world. Uh, thank you. A, and thank you, Dr. Dr. Lakshmi, thank you very much. Now in March, very beginning of March, we're bringing the, the women empowerment back again with, uh, with full force. You will be very useful there because you have actually now outreach with them. And another reason why uh, we are very proud of you, you heard what we did during the live session today. We have set up a, a motion on a project. I would like to include you in that group. And then if you can get Gianluca and uh, uh, Armananda Swami in Spain, and let us also penetrate the European school authorities in together with what we want to do about um, integrated health, food, food sustainability, food health and hygiene, etc. So now there is a mixture of a cross between integrated health and the food here. So you will be part of that as well. I'll guide you further offline on that. Thank you very much. I'll come back to you. While we are at it, Kiran and Seema, our senior anchor, Dr. Soda was awarded today. And here he is, our chiropractor. He got an award for at House of Lords for the World Humanitarian Foundation for his work into human society. So isn't that wonderful? Again, all the healing of our people are, are moving into awards and stuff. Uh, whilst talking about that, our Simran Ahuja, the host, is now one of the top anchors at the red carpet interviews of all the Bollywoods. So healing our art people just moves on and on and on. And Seema Kiran, and I will bring uh, Mala now, it's time to conclude. And I know Kiran, we have only discovered three quarter, of, I mean, only one quarter of your subject. So Seema, you include one hour for this conclusion. And that conclusion will also say further out it is, now I'm very keen because we want to get into the country, into the education authority, in with projects. 
not just episodes at healing. So how, how other departments have started, the Ayurveda is already into the government, which are part of healing our earth, integrated health. Let's bring in the food. So Kiran, you write eloquently, very nicely. So here is your task, a healing our earth paper on food and health. Within that, there will be subsection. Seema, you've got to oversee it in your very busy schedule because the good news about Seema is she's also going to venture into Ayurveda spa and facials and things like that, where within the year, she's going to uh, uh, bring in so many uh, facets of that, which is beautiful. Our Dr. Lakshmi Vyas, who is the current president for Hindu Forum of Europe, will also be very instrumental for us to reach into Europe. The contacts are already there. We've got so many members in the HFE. In fact, I think two more countries. Dr. Vyas, can you confirm? Because I think two more countries are joining from Europe, aren't they? Yes. Um, uh, what is that? Uh, Norway. Norway yes. and Slovenia. Wow. So that's beautiful. And Slovenia, of course, the ISKCON and the yoga people are part of healing our earth. So what a beautiful thing that we can now multiply. So now is the time to outreach within the healing experts and move into the school, the education and parliamentarians. Now, Kiran, which many people may not know, she also attends in Luxembourg and other places to a different set of people where I think you ladies should now start getting involved and maybe either in summer later this year, we all meet up in some European country or something with, uh, with a retreat or by next year, definitely we do that. So time for Kiran and Seema to conclude with Mala. Seema, please include one hour of this session to do outreach with regarding to the food and the projects where Mala is going to be very instrumental. So Mala, welcome. And you are now going to be part of a production team, not just a team member of healing, but a part of a production team. And maybe you can lead the project with outreach with councils of United Kingdom, okay? Yep. Happy to help. And uh, during COVID, we made many networks. Uh, we're actually nominated during COVID. I was nominated. Uh, central for the central government awards uh, for delivering uh, the COVID um, project, getting food out to families. So there you go. Good things. We made great networks and we all had to sit on um, steering groups and emergency response groups uh, nationally uh, about how we're delivering uh, during COVID. So yeah, there are networks. Happy to help connect abroad as well. I've got networks in America that actually helped me with the surplus food uh, with global uh, retailers. So happy to bring them on board. I've got a final message from my site. Uh, if I could uh, give my message. Sure. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say, uh, we're all so busy and everybody's busy <clears throat> in the world. Um, to our global family and everybody listening in, Please always remember every day to give thanks and gratitude to our farmers and their workers that grow out the food to feed us daily. To God that sustains us daily, Mother Nature, um, a good balance of the sun for photosynthesis, which means making out light, good balance of rain that reproduces, replenishes, and feeds us in thirst. With global warming, which is coming in rapidly, Let's pray for the elements of nature to give us a good balance of its requirements to sustain us on this earth. If you see what's going on in the world there, we need to pray even harder for a good balance of the natural elements to sustain us and sustain our food systems. Mana, you said it all. Such a powerful, beautiful, powerful and beautiful message. Thank you for that. Very impactful. I will certainly focus on that prayer. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you for that call to action. Yeah. You know, and we really need to be conscious of so many things, what we're eating, where our food comes from, how it impacts our world, you know, what we need to do, how much time we have, you know, how can we counteract this? It's a long process. We have done it to ourselves. 
you know, there's so many greenhouse gas emissions, you know, how can we reduce our carbon footprint? What can be done for the environment? You know, what can be done in relation to what just we spoke about, very, very powerful children, educating them on food hygiene, not only nutrition, on food hygiene, making parents more aware. You know, there is so much work to be done. And as Kiran said very powerfully and very sweetly, I hope someone is watching out there, right, mm -hmm. Kiran? I have to bring these words up again because you said it so powerfully. So say it again for everybody, please. I can't remember what I said. You said it. Say so many things. Really. You know, it's something touching. It just we, we are here to make a change, and we want to make a difference. Each and every one of us wants to make a difference. Yeah. Hundred percent. As individuals, we can only do this much. But when everybody moves together, you yeah. can do so much. Yeah. So if anybody's out there watching our session today and whatever we said resonates with you, strikes a chord in your heart, drop us an email, drop us an SMS, come on board, be part of the family, move along with us and help us make the change that you all want to see. Absolutely. It takes a tiny seed to plant a huge forest. Yes, Let's do this. <laughs> I can see that Lata Ji has raised her hand. Uh, we have a few minutes left. Maybe she can say something very quick before we yeah. close our session for yeah. this evening. Hi, Who's Lata. unmuting me? <laughs> Hi, everyone, and bye. <laughs> Almost time to say bye. Um, so. Going on from what Marla said, Marla, you are amazing. <laughs> you know, you've been really wonderful this uh, session. And I just thought taking, um, continuing from what you said, um, I'd like to have a take on that is I think we need to also have um, pray for equality where the money is to come where the money is needed. Yeah. And when we get that cross, or what do we call it? Cross, um, the crossroads. The yeah, the crossroads. But we said the other word. What was we saying? Cross, today, cross contamination. Uh, yeah, cross contamination. The cross financial <laughs> balancing act will be what we are going to be praying okay. for okay. and <laughs> asking for the divine energies, and you know appeal to their hearts and their good side <laughs> yes. that, you know, they will, it will spread, it will spread. And that's when we can start really seeing the results that we're looking for. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's what I want to just. So add. your words to God's ears. Yeah. Endless prayers. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's already heard our prayers because the very fact that we're here today is yeah. a prayer in answer. Thanks to Neil, <laughs> bringing it about and uh, bringing these strong, powerful forces together. <laughs> you know, sitting around a Zoom screen, um, it, it's it's coming together. You know, in women empowerment. I'd like to understand what you actually mean by that, Neil. <laughs> if you could clarify, <laughs> because uh, women empowerment is so such a big thing. It's it's such a big umbrella, and uh, so many different sections and segments um, go into that. Yeah, but um, I think it's wonderful how it's coming together under this umbrella amazing well done <laughs> to all of the team <laughs> yeah thank you so much lata uh, for your very kind words you know this brings me back as we come to the nearing the close of our session now um mahatma gandhi said be the change you want to see 
right? Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to see the change. But my question is, how many of us want to be the change? Yeah. So our yeah. opinion here, Kevin, you'll agree because you're so passionate and I mean, Mala, you're so passionate and you both have, I call this so much electricity within yourselves and drives that to empower others to be the change that we want to see. Our appeal here is to all of you who want to be a part of creating that change. Let's move together. The time is now. We don't have time. We don't have time for our future generations. Children actually are suffering these days from anxiety of what the future of the planet is going to be. Is there going to be enough food for them by 2050? The climate crisis is going to be affecting on a much heavier level. The world population is going to be increasing. How are, going to be, how are we going to create these changes? These are questions I see as a mother in my children, and my children will probably see in their children, right, Karen? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's you know, create Sima uh, you're absolutely right. And our roles as moms is to take care of the children and their children and their great grandchildren and so on and so forth. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Yep. I'll close in that. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank the you. harvest is plentiful, and the workers are few. That is so strong and so true. So let's all take a pledge today, you know, to become that worker. Yeah. To be those hands that can create change. And as I say this, let us all now come to a close for our session for this evening. I want to thank each and every viewer from every part of the globe that's watching us for coming on board with us. What a fantastic session we had today. Very meaningful. Mala, thank you so much for joining us today. You're yeah. very inspirational. Karen, as always, so much seva and inspiration from you. Thank you. Yeah. No, you guys are phenomenal. Mala, you're, you're just full of hope and energy and life. I admire you for that, you know. Uh, a deeply courageous woman. Thank you. And sure. I'll just uh, see if does anybody have any final questions before we sign off for today? Okay, I think we've got it all covered. That means we were really good at what we did. Let's give ourselves a big hand, everybody. Thank you Thank so you. much. And to Neil. Neil. And to our founder and director, right? Mr. Neil Kumar. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much. And to everyone out there who's watching us, if it wasn't for all of you, we all wouldn't be. So as we come to the close of our session, I will be once again saying the Gayatri Mantra three times with one Loka Samasta, holding that intention within our hearts for a better, bigger, brighter, greener tomorrow for our children, for the children of tomorrow. Let's take that sankalpa, that wish in our heart. Let's be committed. Let's put all that positive energy out there. Any affirmation, any wish, hold it within your heart. Thank you all very much for being with us this evening or morning or afternoon from wherever in the globe you're connecting to us from. We will close our session with the Gayatri Mantra. Om Bo Bhuvaspa Tat Savitur Vareniya Margo Sadi Mahi Dio Yoda Prachodaya Om Bhuvaspa Tat Savitur Vareniya Margo Devasya De Mahi De Yo Yona Prachodayat Om Bhur Bhuvaswa Tatsavitur Varenia 
बर्गो देवश्यमे दियो यो प्रचोदयात मे ऑल बींग्स ऑन आर प्लैनेट बी हैप्पी हेल्थी जॉयफुल एंड ब्लिसफुल लोका समस्त सुखिनो बवंतु ओ शांति शांति शांति